What's up, guys? This is uh, Ty Zen, and with me today, <laughs> here you go. I have the honorable grandmaster, legendary LeonFu.com, the great oracle of cryptocurrency, and we're broadcasting here from Atlanta, Georgia, um, one of the biggest uh, cities in the southeast of uh, the United States of America. And uh, in this module three, we want to talk about the overview of the top privacy coins uh, real quick. Um, in module number two, uh, about the Privacy Coins 101, we talked about the Privacy Coin bucket and the three uh, buckets uh, that are inside, the three sub-buckets are inside the Privacy Coin bucket. And in this uh, video, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, overview of the top Privacy Coins and what you should pay attention to and what the differences are between them. If you'll notice, uh, we took out one of the modules, uh, it was six before, and now we combine it to five because uh, it, it was better to combine them so it made more sense and flowed easier. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, real quick, our sponsorship disclaimer here. This video has been sponsored by a Privacy Coin project to provide an independent third-party review of the major Privacy Coin projects currently active to educate the public about the importance of financial privacy. So. There, uh, the origin of most privacy coins um, come from two categories or two places. Um, you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah. So, you know, uh, all of the privacy projects fall in one of these two uh, categories at the moment. Of course, this is all can change. Uh, they either start off with a Bitcoin code base and then they add privacy features to that code base, and that's what we mean when and, and that we in computers terms we call that a fork or. Uh, you know, you take the existing code base and you start like a new branch. Uh, and then they started adding uh, different privacy features uh, what, uh, that, you know, when I exp we explained the last of the buckets, the different technologies, that's generally, that's what they're doing. So they, add, so they take the, the, the Bitcoin software mm -hmm. and then they add, one, on of the, of it, they yes. add one of the three uh, technologies that we discussed yes. in the previous and, and, video. Yes, in the previous videos, okay. yes. Uh, but there's a very notable uh, project that came out a few years ago. It's called CryptoNote. Uh, and so what they do is CryptoNote actually uh, is a research project and a white paper. Uh, and they, let's go to it. Yes, let's go to it. Okay. Well, well, we'll get to that in we'll a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start yes. with the Bitcoin first. All right, sure. So Bitcoin, there's uh, a bunch of these privacy projects that started out with the Coinbase, uh, I mean, the Bitcoin uh, software. software code base. Uh, and they're Zcoin, Dash, Shadowcash, Zcash, and then... There's also multiple forks of Zcash, and one of them is like uh, Zclash is an example of them. Um, so why, what, what's the advantage if you start with the Bitcoin code base is because uh, you're very similar to Bitcoins, it's easy for everyone to adopt your, your, uh, your coin because it's very similar to Bitcoin, which there's a huge code base already there. That means exchanges can list you very easily, mining pools, wallet makers can integrate you and it's easy to support because bitcoin is so widely understood and uh, in case you're new to uh cryptocurrencies mining pools are the computers and the, the people who volunteer their computers to process all the transactions in the network and secure the network yeah. so uh, what, are, what are some of the disadvantages the disadvantages like it, it's it's hard to know if the developers have a deep understanding of the cryptography of the math of the code even if they haven't built it, if they just simply took someone else's code and are just hacking it to, to you know, you know, add these privacy features, it, it's not very clear if they actually know what they're doing. Um, so, th and, and that's really, and that creates technical risks, right? They don't, there's no guarantee because they don't have a deep understanding of the math and the, the cryptography behind it. And that uh, creates risk to the project as an investment because somebody might just come along and hack the whole thing. Uh, and and so that that's a big disadvantage. Okay, so just uh, um, just uh, uh, so this would be analogous to uh, analogous to if someone takes the Bitcoin software and they put a security feature on top of it, that would be like uh, when you go to the automotive dealerships and like the trucking companies, they would go and buy the chassis yeah. from like Ford Motor Company or. Or from RAM. A better analogy, I think, would be like if you bought a sports car yeah. and you ripped the engine out and dropped the new engine in, right? Okay. And now mm -hmm. to, to, let's say, increase the horsepower, but you don't know if they actually, uh, you know, got the suspension and all the other things correct to match, with to match what this new engine does, okay. right? Now, you want to talk uh, about, because uh, 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 there are people in the cryptocurrency world 
that believe that you should start from scratch, like uh, Charles Hoskinson. Yeah, he was arguing that former founder of the Ethereum. Yeah, he uh, was arguing that un unless you've rebuilt the whole thing, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, if we're using cars as an analogy, it would be right. the equivalent of let's strip the whole car down to its component parts and put it all back together again. Yeah. And if you can do that, you can prove to everyone you actually know how this thing works, right? And you because, can replicate each and component. you can replicate each component because you, you, you basically uh, took it all apart and put it all back together. And yeah. that, that's what he's doing with uh, Ethereum Classic. He's working on a client uh, with, he hired a bunch of developers to do exactly that. To take apart the client and then put it back and together. And rebuilt a new client from their understanding, right? Take apart the existing yeah. code base and understand it, mm -hmm. and then rebuild the uh, an Ethereum client from scratch okay. in a brand in, new in a language. Different, uh, in a different language even. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he feels that that when you do something like that, you're able to prove to everyone Yeah, it gives that, your team credibility okay. that you have the technical know-how because you built, re, you rebuilt the entire thing. From scratch. From scratch. Now, what's your personal opinion? You're a software developer. What's your personal well, opinion? Well, um, I can see, I, I, I agree. Uh, I agree with uh, his point uh, as a software engineer. That's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I completely agree if that's necessary uh, okay. for, from an investment uh, Sandy, remember we're yeah we're, we're investors we're, investors we're, investors here, right? we're not engineers uh, we're not engineers because I, I would argue like something like Doggy Coin or Dogecoin yeah. built themselves up to a twenty million dollar market cap from nothing just based on just the, copying Bitcoin just copying Bitcoin <laughs> and nothing, and else. nothing else I yeah. mean you would have made okay. a bunch of money if you invested if you were one of the okay. early investors in Bitcoin and also yeah. I meant to say Charles Hoskinson is the one of the former co-founders of Ethereum not the founder yeah he's, he's a former the, former yeah. co-founder yes. all right yes. so. And then talk about CryptoNote and, and its philosophy here. Yeah, so CryptoNote saw the privacy problems Bitcoin had that we had covered in the, the last video. So it, it's, it was a research project uh, set out to try to fix those problems, to try to make uh, the, the currency fungible, which we defined in the last video. And that means uh, making sure... Well, Making sure that the money in my pocket is the same, is the same as the money, as the money in your and pocket. It, they're doing that by removing the transaction history behind each coin. Okay. Um, now talk about the open source. Uh, 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 so, so it's, a, so it, it's an it's open source means how it works is a white paper that you can download for free off their website, uh, and so they also created a reference implementation that you can go if you know if you're a software engineer you can go and read it to see if it actually does what they say it does. So when, when we um, say that it's open source and it can be inspected by others for flaws, why is that important? Well, it, it's, it basically is it's a security guarantee that anyone who understands technology can go validate that what you're saying okay. is true. And it, it's also important because especially for uh, security and privacy, yeah. Uh, projects is to, to as many eyes looking yeah, at it as possible. Yeah, and it's also to make sure that you are actually doing what you say you're doing. Okay, so <laughs> can you give the audience an example of what's a closed source uh, software? A closed source software is anything you buy, any software you'd buy from like Microsoft, Windows, Windows okay. uh, anything from Apple. It's, it's generally closed source, it's proprietary. Which means, you know, how it works, they don't tell you. you so you only know. the company engineers. Only the company engineers can look at, can look at it. But open okay. source means it's on GitHub. It's which is a website that uh, for software developers okay. that they can go and download. Um, like you can go download if you go on the Bitcoin uh, w website, you can go download the entire source code and look okay, at it. Okay, so crypto node uh, has financial privacy. It's unlinkable, untraceable transactions. So that means that you cannot go back and see where the transactions came from or where it's going, mm -hmm. right? Now, fair proof of work, right? Uh, it can be mined on an average PC. That means that CryptoNote, uh, the, the technology can be done on any regular PC. You don't have to have a whole mining company like or a mining pool. Like yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and it's adaptive to market, uh, to changing market conditions, which is important. As markets change, you can adjust the parameters of the software, yeah. right? So no double spending means that you don't uh, the once you send the uh, the uh, tokens to another uh, a, re a recipient, you cannot copy and paste and send it again to someone else and cheat the system. Yeah. Right now, you said uh, you said that crypto note coin. Uh, it's a reference. It's a reference. It, it means it's not a coin. It's a te it, it, what the the word in the community is called a test net. Right. It, yeah. It's basically it's reset every few months to make sure people don't start trading this thing. Yeah. It's meant to make sure it's meant as a reference, as a guide to other, as a demonstration, a yeah. proof it's of like concept. It's like a prototype, so yeah. people can come and try it out and, and test try it, it out and test okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now. 
Um, building a cryptocurrency from scratch, right? Talk about the advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. So, of it. It, so if you do that, if your team builds something from scratch, yeah. um, you obviously you understand it because you built it yourself. Um, so it, it proves that at least you understand it at the level that you've done. Um, okay, so Monero is an example of a privacy coin. Yes, that yes. Monero is an example of a privacy note based on the crypto note. Uh, technology. It, it, yeah, it's a, it's a, what, it, what happens is uh, it's a brand new code base. Okay. Uh, it is not from uh, Bitcoin's code base at all. Okay, talk about some of the disadvantages. Uh, so some disadvantages, which, you know, there's, there's reasons uh, uh, people don't do this, uh, teams don't do this, is uh, you are not compatible with any of the existing infrastructure, mainly for Bitcoin, because there's massive, you know, b remember Bitcoin is 80 to 90% of the entire value of, uh, uh, of the cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency world, period. At this moment, right? Yeah. So there's a huge amount of infrastructure. There's a huge amount of uh, uh, exchanges, exchanges, mining, mining pools, pools, wallet services. Wallet services. Um, uh, so if you have your own code base, it's very difficult for those services to uh, to adopt you to integrate uh, your your project your coin. Um, so one of the reasons is Monero. Uh, uh, we're using Monero as an example. Uh, Jackson Exodus are two very popular wallets, um, and they uh, have had trouble integrating Monero. Uh, it difficult to integrate. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, Jax uh, put it out a tweet I remember a few months ago. Is they were just spending too much time on it and they had to put it on hold. Okay. Uh, the g guys at Exodus also mentioned that it's very. They, they've been having. They want to integrate it because it's yeah. so popular, but yeah. they're having a really hard time. And to this day, after two years, Monero's been out. I think two years now. Yeah. Uh, there are still no uh, third-party wallets. Okay. Even. To this day, <laughs> hmm. yes. And, then, and you said that when they put out a uh, a web wallet, it even got hacked or something like that. Well, or people have reported wallet? because because it's they they did put out a web wallet, and um, because it's a web wallet, it has all the vulnerabilities of any web wallet. Yeah. Um, and uh, th there have been reports on the on the um, on the uh, forums about people losing their Moneros. Okay. Um, so it's it's a lot more work for exchanges to support. Uh, and like like we mentioned here, it can, there's a huge code base of Bitcoin that would be easily adaptable for the coins that are based on Bitcoin's uh, uh, code base. Okay. Uh -huh. So let's talk about. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk real quick about the team members of the Crypto Note. Uh -huh. uh, they have Johannes uh, Meyer. He's the chief cryptographer. Maurice Plank, the cryptographer. You don't have to memorize all these people or what their roles are, right? But what's important here is that Crypto Note. Uh, we put a question mark here because there's not a lot of information on there. Like we try to research and find them mm -hmm. and it's not easily uh, 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 found. Mm -hmm. So the, because it's a privacy coin project, these people, these call, people he, want to remain private. private. Right? <laughs> yes. And I'm not even sure if those are their real names, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was hard to find them, yeah. right? Now, a few things that you guys want to know about CryptoNote is that they have a foundation. It was announced on July 14, 2014. Their mission and their philosophy is to unite and facilitate the community to standardize and develop crypto note technology and to promote the crypto note as the next generation crypto platform. And they say that there's more information coming soon about the foundation. I put a question mark here because it's not very clear. Um, I try to look for more information, but none of the links work to any of the names of the people that's on the board or any of it. And then. Uh, I put a red arrow there because uh, in the light uh, colored text right there, it says that um, they'll be will be announced in late 2015, and it's already 2017, two years later, and we still haven't heard much from the foundation. Okay, so uh, just be aware of that. Um, now there's components of crypto node uh, as well. There's other components. There's the crypto node technology that we just discussed, and there's a crypto note forum that you can go in there. There's not a lot of activity there. And then what's interesting is that they have the crypto note starter, right, which allows you to create your own cryptocurrency in 10 minutes. Now, this is basically how the, the, the new cryptocurrencies are created. Many uh, of them, yes. Yeah, many of them, right? Let's take a look at some. Uh, the first crypto note privacy coin was actually called Bitcoin. And crypto note was originally just a white paper, you mm -hmm. said. Yes, yeah. And then the first crypto note based currency was released in July, July 2012, 2012, and it's called Bitcoin. And it's created in close cooperation with the crypto note team. Cool. So mm -hmm. Bitcoin was the first and original uh, implementation, implementation mm -hmm. or creation of the crypto note uh, white paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's talk about the crypto note family tree. Right, it starts here. 
the first uh, coin that was cryptocurrency that was created was called Bitcoin. And from here, it forked out into all these dozens, other ones. Yeah, um, some up here, these down here, um, for example, like Dashcoin, Bullberry, Darknet Coin, Digital Note, Monero, Pebble Coin, Phantom Coin, right? And then they got a bunch of other minor ones called Dr. Byte, Infinium. Uh, I don't even want to know yeah, all the names yeah, of them, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, the reason why we're not going to talk about over 95% of these is because most of them are dead. Yeah. Okay, these died out. They, their no software yeah. has no development. And for a privacy coin, security is utmost important. And we're not going to talk about any softwares or any privacy coins that have not had their software updated in the last year or so. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And some of these haven't been updated in a year and a half, two years, three years. So that's not very safe. We would never uh, recommend any of those uh, to you guys. And these are so small, it's not even worth, uh, um, uh, it's worth a mention. And that's it. It's not even worth researching. Okay? But there are two that did survive. Uh, from all this family tree, and that's Bullberry and Monero, and we're going to focus on Monero mm -hmm. uh, most, okay? Yeah. Now, before we go in and focus on Monero and some of the other major uh, privacy coins, talk about the difference between a feature versus a platform. Yeah. So, uh, a feature is a coin or a project that's based around doing one or two or a few things very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a Bitcoin, of course, is the biggest and most valuable cryptocurrency, like we, we've mentioned, it's between 80 and 90% of the entire value of this space. Um, but um, what happens is, uh, and Monero is basically like Bitcoin, it's as, as of right now, it's a, it does one thing very well, it's focused on doing privacy extremely well. Um, so what happens to the, it relies on projects like, you know, there are a few projects that are built on top of Bitcoin uh, to extend what Bitcoin is able to do, right? Uh, things like Counterparty, Omni, uh, Rootstock are a few of them, and there's dozens of projects right now. I, th I think there's over 10,000 repositories on GitHub uh, with people trying to build various things uh, using Bitcoin as a base, Okay. right? So, so GitHub is, uh, uh, for the audience here, mm -hmm. GitHub, for people that are not software people, that's where all the software... Uh, it's a code, uh, code repository. Yeah, it's like a library. Yeah, yeah. Software engineers, developers, that's yeah. where they write code. That's where they, they save it. They say, that's where they save it. And then, yeah. so yeah. even you have a... Uh, a I, I have uh, a GitHub. Almost every yeah. software engineer will have a GitHub account. Okay, um, so anyone can come there and download it. Yes, anyone okay. can download it. Because it's a safe place for it to be stored. Uh, yes. Okay, yes. Uh, and then, um, so you're saying that all uh, there's over 10,000 uh, software projects going on on GitHub. Yeah. Where it's being built on top of just Bitcoin alone. Bitcoin, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, now so talk about so what's pla a platform yeah, based. So a platform uh, based project are things where they are trying to create a tool set so that you can build within the coin or within mm -hmm. the project, right? Okay. Um, not above it, yeah. like Bitcoin, but within it. Within inside. Within of it. inside of it, right? Okay. Uh, and and the biggest one right now, which is the second most uh, valuable uh, cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency after Bitcoin, it's at, at about two billion dollars. Yeah. Um, re remember, we said Bitcoin was 85, 80, 80, 80 to ninety yeah. percent. Well, the other ten percent is Ethereum. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Ethereum supports uh, smart contracts, and it allows people to build within the Ethereum ecosystem. It's like building inside the box. Instead or build on top, on top, of, top of the box, right? Okay. Um, and there's a few others that are much smaller, like Stratus and Lisk, and there's, I'm sure that we have others. Uh, but right now, Ethereum is by far the, the uh, you know, 10 times, 100 times bigger than any of those. Okay. Yeah. So uh, where should you focus uh, your attention now, right? Because we've talked a lot about privacy coins, and the question that people always, investors always ask us is where should they put their attention on? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, we will only focus on the leading privacy coins. You know, sometimes we call it the major privacy coins versus the minor privacy coins. Uh, the reason why we focus on the major ones or the leading ones are there are too many minor privacy coins with insignificant features, and they don't have a large enough community behind them yet. Mm -hmm. So the major privacy coins are the ones that include like Dash, Monero, Monero Zcash. Zcash, and the Shadow Cash or the Shadow Project, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, just a quick reminder. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before we dive into uh, Dash right here, I uh, just want to show everyone Dash's performance in 2016. Mm -hmm. It made over 500% profit and made five times your money, right? So um, that's in the dark arrow. In the light arrow with the light text, mm -hmm. it made over uh, close to 2,000% profit or 20 times your yeah, money in, in 15 months. Yeah. yeah, and it's gone up even higher in uh, 2017.
All right. So talk about some of the dash factor. Sure. So let's give, let's let's give just, the yeah, let's get stats. some background here. So it was start. The project was started in January uh, 2014. Uh, the supply is going to be tw 22 million coins. Uh, currently, there's about seven million dashes uh, circulating. Um, and I believe the block rewards are 3.6 coins every two and a half minutes. Um, and it's uh, decreasing 7% per year. Is, and right now it's currently trading at around 70 bucks uh, with a half a billion dollars in market value at the moment. Um, so it's, it's some unique uh, things they have is they have some very interesting governance uh, features. They have a built-in treasury where some of the mining rewards goes to the development team to help fund the development. So what's unique about this is as the price goes up in Dash, the, the, the development community will have more and more funds uh, yeah. to help hire more, you know, do whatever they're going to do. And funding is one of the most important uh, features or aspects that you need yeah. to consider when you invest in any cryptocurrency, not just privacy yeah. uh, coins, but any cryptocurrency. Yeah. And, and I would mention Bitcoin had a funding problem because mm -hmm. all the developers of Bitcoins weren't getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and until it, like Blockstream, uh, until Blockstream uh, came in and like a VC backed them. So a, lo a lot of the uh, Bitcoin developers, unless they owned a lot of Bitcoins, uh, mm -hmm. they were working, they were volunteers. Yeah. Uh, so this so. is one of the unique things about Dash is because they have a built in funding system where they don't have to go out and beg for money or ask for sponsorships yeah. or ask for money. Mm -hmm. But that's also a uh, thing that other people complain about sure, too. Sure, so it's not sure. always. You know, there's, there's people that favor it and there's people that do not favor it. Favor Obviously, we favor it because we believe that without funding, you can't grow. That's right. We need some, every money project. has to come from somewhere. Yeah, I, you know, working for free, uh, people can only do that for so long. Yeah, until <laughs> their stomach starts getting hungry and starts yeah. growling, yeah. and then you need food. You need food, yeah. Okay? So um, that, that was one of the, some of the problems uh, that, that NXT had, mm -hmm. was that it was a very good ideological project, but there was no funding. There was no funding, yeah. So nobody wants to run over there and work on it. Yeah, that's right. right. So uh, let's talk about the team makeup, uh -huh. right? Started by Evan Duffield, mm -hmm. right here. That's this guy, yeah. Right? And uh, his background, experience uh, uh, um, of each player, you know? Yeah, it's uh, right here on the is, website. Uh, right here. You uh -huh. go read about yeah, it. Yeah, read about and it. And then uh, you talked about you went to the Miami Bitcoin yeah, conference. And I, and I watched uh, Ryan Taylor, which we'll have a photo of him later. He spoke there. He's the director of finance. And yeah. he says, Dash, right now, um, they started out as a privacy project, but now they're focused on mass adoption. Uh, right there. Yeah, mass right. adoption. And they're going to do that with uh, superior user experiences, consumer services such as debit cards and ATMs, and a lot of community building. Okay. Yeah. Um, it has widespread uh, yeah. support. So remember, Dash was one of the Bitcoin based uh, uh, coins. It, was, it yeah. was built on top of Bitcoin uh, or a fork of Bitcoin. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, there's plenty of wallets mobile, on your phone, uh, on the web on the desktop, uh, et cetera. There's even a lot, of, and this is unusual, not every, uh, very few coins actually have support from hardware wallets, such as Trezor, KeepKey, Ledger, Nano, and we advocate you, if you have any significant amount of cryptocurrencies, you try to store as much as you can on, a, on one of these devices on a hardware wallet. Yeah, if you, especially um, if you have more than one month's worth of income, uh, you definitely need to keep it on one of the hardware wallets. Yeah. All right, um, do not keep it on your phone or your laptop. Yeah. Um, so right now it's at number three after Bitcoin and Ethereum, and recently I would say this year it's blown past Litecoin, Ripple, and Monero uh, in market cap. and market value. It's just like blew right past them. And it um, has uh, excellent liquidity. Yeah, it has yeah, millions of dollars of trading. Yeah, millions each day. of dollars, so that you have no problems getting in or getting out at this moment. So it's a meteoric rise. It started at less than a year ago at ten dollars. Uh, as of now, it's seventy, and it just Keep, it's doing its moonshot. Right. Yeah. So uh, talk about the origins of Dash, right? Yeah. So it was started in 2015, and it was the idea. It's, it was one of the it was one of the first privacy projects. So remember, we talked about mixing was the the first method that came along because it was simple and obvious to do. Uh, Dash tried to build mixing uh, as a as a service that was within the currency itself, rather than having to go to a third party mixer. Um, it originally was known as X11 coins because the, the proof of work, the, the algorithm mm -hmm. mining, miners used, used 11 different al algorithms instead of just SHA-256. And this was to provide ASIC resistance because they, they didn't want to concentrate the mining power uh, into these huge pools. Uh, that was their attempt, I, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, so yeah, that's, that's the history so, here. So, uh, Mm -hmm. So basically, what they're doing is they're using the uh, the uh, X coin, the, the, these eleven algorithms, so that 
an individual can process and secure the network and not just companies only. Next, we want to talk about the rebranding uh, of Dash. Uh, Dash was rebranded less than two months later. Um, as Darkcoin. Uh, we remember it's, it started out as X11, mm -hmm. and then in a couple of months they said, hey, this is not really a good name because they were still privacy focused at the time. Yeah. So they rebranded, they decided to focus the product. This reflected uh, their focus on privacy. Okay. And that Which was, was not a good idea. <laughs> the, the, name, <laughs> the name Darkcoin just has a very negative and mm -hmm and dark connotation yes. to it, which you don't want, yes. right? Uh -huh. So um, uh -huh. you said they wanted to focus on yeah, privacy? So, so uh, yeah, they wanted to focus on privacy. And that was, the, that was their logo. That, that, this was the original, uh, their uh, symbol, their, their you know, emblem uh, as, uh, as dark coin. Dark coin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so about last, in 2015 of March, they decided they were not going to focus solely on privacy. So they, they rebranded again. Yeah. Uh, and this time as Dash, and that the n name change took effect in March of 2015. Uh, they wanted to focus on mass adoption. They wanted to get everybody to use uh, cryptocurrencies, not just nerds and geeks or and not anarchists just for the and dark web to buy yeah, drugs and illegal dark stuff. Dark webs and illegal stuff. They, that, that's why they pivoted away from just solely focusing on privacy to uh, trying to address some of the issues in Bitcoin that's preventing Bitcoin from being uh, used by everyone. Okay. So um, talk about the market adaptation here, right? So uh, yeah, they still have privacy. There's, there's still, uh, there's still a, the privacy feature that was originally there was called Dark Send. Yeah. Uh, that was also rebranded. Now it's called Private Send. <laughs> okay. So um, you, you said that you saw uh, Ryan Taylor's talk here yes. at the uh, Miami uh, Bitcoin conference. Yes. yes. Just and, a and this few is on weeks YouTube. Ago. I was there. I, I, uh, that's uh, about back in January of this of 2017, mm -hmm. I believe that if, if I have my dates correct. Uh, so yeah, I, I watched him speak. He was the last speaker of that conference, and uh, he, uh, I did what I felt was an excellent speech, a uh, talk about uh, why Bitcoin hasn't gotten mass adoption, and what Dash was going to do to solve those problems. Uh, and it, it's about 20 minutes. You can find it on YouTube if you uh, just search there. Okay. Uh, so now it's now it's focused on getting everyone. Mass adoption is their primary focus. Okay. So uh, when we talk about mass adoption, right, um, they're talking about, you know, getting many consumer focused features yeah. such as ATMs, instant payments, user interface designs, and debit cards. Yeah. But you said that their main thing that, that he stressed the most was getting grandma yeah. can use uh, 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 cryptocurrencies. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, that's, so. that's the thing in there is. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk, jump into uh -huh. Monero, yeah. right? Sure. Uh, let's talk about Monero in 2016. Um, it had over 3,000% gains, yeah. mm -hmm. right, in the first nine in nine months. Mm -hmm. That's 30 times your money. Um, the biggest winner. Yeah, yeah. That, that is definitely life-changing. When you guys hear us talk about life-changing money, uh, you put a thousand bucks in this and it turns into $30,000 in nine months, mm -hmm. that's life-changing. 10,000 to 300,000, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that can buy you, get, be a down payment yeah. for your house, that can you know buy you a house, uh, that can pay for your college, that can do a lot of things, pay for your wedding, that's definitely life-changing. And in the light arrow, in the light text here, uh, it went up 37 times if you just wait another four months. <laughs> sure. right? Definitely life-changing profits are available in the privacy coin sector, guys. Yeah. Right? So let's talk about some of the Monero facts. Yeah, sure. Right. So uh, the project was started uh, a couple years after, one or two years after the Bitcoin uh, coin came out in April of 2014. Uh, there's expected to be 18 million coins. Uh, right now there's 14 million circulating. Uh, there's eight coins uh, with two minute blocks and reducing, eventually that's gonna go down over time to just 0.3 uh, Moneros uh, every two minutes. And what that means is that there's eight coins, uh, eight Monero coins new, are, new are coins. minted. Yeah, minted every right. two minutes. Every two minutes. Yeah, it's 15 bucks. We're over 200 million uh, market cap. And it is the leading, as of now, the leading privacy coin bucket as measured by market cap that's solely focused on privacy. Now Dash does, at this time of this video, Dash is bigger, but they're no longer full focused solely on privacy. Yeah. Um, so th it's a community funded project, uh, as, as, as from my understanding, that it was a bunch of guys that got together and decided to, because there were some issues with the way uh, Bitcoin was distributed and they wanted to start a new project, a new currency okay. that they believed was more fair. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. talk about the team makeup. Yeah, so uh, there's this character uh, called Fluffy Pony. 
that's his, that's his handle. He goes by that um, on online that on his Twitter and on social media. Uh, his real name is Ricardo Sp Spagni. I hope I'm yeah. saying that right. Um, many of the once again because this is a these are privacy projects. Many of the developers seem to want to wish to remain anonymous. So there are many contributors. We don't know the identities of all of them, um, but you can for those that want to reveal themselves, you can go to that website to find out who they are. Uh, right now, they're, they're technology focused, uh, they're really focused on trying to do privacy better. They're one of these projects that's focused on a feature. And not a platform. And so they just want to be the best at... They want to be the best at what they do, right? Okay. And so that, that seems to be what uh, they have uh, the, the team and the, the community is focused on. Now, you know, you and I both know that no matter how good your software is, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't grow and it doesn't make money unless there's people using it, sure, right? Because sure. and, and we're investors, so we want to invest in sure. softwares that people are actually going to yeah. use. So what's their strategy to gain market well, adoption? I, I mean, we can make money uh, as they develop uh, um, as they develop their technology and as they perfect yeah. their technology, we yeah. will make money. Like in the short term, in the short term you, yeah. you will make money. But once you get to a certain point, yeah. you need to get users. You, th those vertical rises, the chart is yeah. because of adoption, because somebody, a group, started, of a, people. A, a group of people decided they were going to, en masse, like a numerous group of people uh, decided, uh, you know, technology can only get you so far. Okay. Um, but uh, the reason Monero exploded is because. Um, they actually did get adoption. They got adoption from uh, the the dark markets. Uh, mm -hmm. These the are dark markets are pl places uh, on the internet mm -hmm. where they sell illegal stuff, such as you know drugs, drugs guns, you know, guns, things anything. like that. Yeah, things like that. So Alpha Bay is right now, I, I believe, the leading dark market, and Monero is accepted as payment on that uh, market. Uh, and that is the now we don't advocate. Uh, any illegal any activities illegal in your activities, country. But, you know, there are people that do that, and Monero, um, for one reason, uh, we'll get, we might get into that later, yeah. but that, that's the reason for the rise here. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so CryptoNote was really groundbreaking. It was a, really a way uh, to address uh, using ring signatures, one of the technologies we described, uh, to make unlinkable payments. So if I pay you and mm -hmm. you pay someone else, no one can follow that coin uh, through the blockchain as okay. they can with Bitcoin. Uh, so, you know, it was based on the white paper in 2012, and the reference implementation uh, was for educational purposes. You can go on their website and take a look at it. Uh, and it was the first uh, crypto, the actual crypto meant to be distributed uh, to use this reference uh, implementation uh, for ring signatures. And that's when Monero, and that's came, when Monero came out uh, a few years later, uh, building on top of the code base of Bitcoin. Okay. So now, um, talk about the uh, uh, um, Monero's a fork, right? Yes. Or a clone of Bitcoin. Yes. Uh -huh. It officially started in April 2012, yeah. right? Uh -huh. so you, there's a good uh, explanation, explanation of the ring signatures. Yes. Um, so they uh, uh, exploded in price uh, in 2016 uh, when uh, the dark market Oasis uh, came out and started accepting it as payment, mm -hmm. uh, just because now, uh, you know, now this wasn't just a, uh, a currency that uh, privacy or cryptographers or, you know, academ academia was just yeah. playing around with. Uh, that was being used to purchase people stuff. People were using it to actually buy stuff, and in this case, buying uh, drugs on these dark marketplaces. And there's a uh, at the same big, uh, conference in Miami, I mm -hmm. ran into a big investor in Monero, and he told me, I, I haven't... And then this was a hedge fund manager. This was a hedge fund manager. I, I, it's just from... Yeah, exactly. He was uh, a, a hedge fund manager, and he, his, he told me that 10% of all the drugs being purchased on these dark markets was using, using Monero, Monero. Mm -hmm. okay. as a currency. Now, yeah. uh, you want to talk about the exit scam? Yeah, so yeah. So it's a, real, it? it's a real... It's a real saying where uh, the owners of uh, the, the owners of Oasis, I believe it was, uh, received a lot of Moneros, actually bought it or was given uh, a, a large, a, a sum large of Monero sum of tokens. Moneros. Uh, uh, and then they announced that they were going to accept it as payment on, on, on their markets. That caused it, that was the first rise mm -hmm. that you saw in that chart. So let's go back to it real quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. that, that, that's when this happened. When once this dark market picked it up, that's when you had this explosion to thirteen dollars here, oh, past thirteen dollars, up to like fifteen dollars. 
Uh, but then the, um, the owners of Oasis decided they were just going to take the money and run. <laughs> yeah. So they basically they were offered a bunch of uh, Monero tokens uh -huh. from the the Monero team, right? Mm -hmm. And then they also and once they loaded that up, they announced that they were going to accept it on their dark market. So they were willing to accept it. So people started rushing in to buy, to buy it, it yeah. so they can buy the token so that they can use it to buy the illegal stuff yeah. on the dark market. Yeah. So you can see it started out at 50 cents, right? Yeah. So as news got out, they were, you know, rumors started getting out that, they, you know, a, a dark net was going to pick it up. Then the news came out yeah, <laughs> that they actually did. Then it went, went, went crazy. Now, everything would have been okay, but mm -hmm. what happened was the owners of the dark market, they sold all their tokens into the rally here, and then they just shut down their website and just left. And, took and, and everybody money. that deposited funds into their dark market, right, took off. Took off. So this would be the equivalent of uh, saying, for example, like eBay or Amazon, just taking saying that, money and taking off. everybody's money and just shutting down their business and then yeah. uh, Well, taking they had off. made so much money in this yeah. run that they decided, yeah. you, know, you know, I guess they were, I don't know what their motivations yeah. are. But and what's interesting uh, is that this was supposed to die out when it crashed like yeah, this. Yeah, so this was the crash that happened when that, after that exit scam. And, it, and that, this should have that should have been the end yeah. of Monero. I mean that really. Im but it did. Like I said, privacy is beyond just uh, buying but, drugs. Yeah. Uh, we, we we covered that in the first video that uh, the, the 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 news when everyone's this caused everyone to start looking at this. Yeah. And despite uh, the exit scam, uh, people uh, realize that hey, this is more valuable as privacy as privacy than just using it to buy drugs, yeah. right? This, uh, people thought that, oh, it's valuable because you can use it to buy drugs. Well, you can't use it to buy drugs anymore. Yeah. And they crashed, right? And that should have been dead. And that should have been dead. That should have been the end of it. But they realized that, hey, it's not just buying drugs. This is the privacy feature it's in it privacy is what encouraged features. people to still use it. Uh -huh. And that's the reason why it went back up. Yeah, and it's even higher now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so um, yeah. just this is an important note to yeah. make, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the distinction to make. The, the, the Dartnet businesses that that announced that they were accepting Monero uh, as a currency on their, in, on, on their, in their business, mm -hmm. in their market, right? The business was a scam, mm -hmm. but the technology behind Monero it's is not, not a scam. scam. Yes. So just be aware of that, guys, yes. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just because you know, someone uh, 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 rips off their customers uh, for their currency does not mean that that currency is bad or it's a scam, okay? So we just wanna make that very clear that Monero the currency, the, the cryptocurrency is not a scam. Their technology mm -hmm. is doing what they claim yeah. for it to do. Mm -hmm. It's just the business that decided to accept it ran off with everyone's and money. And you know what? If we real, if if I or we yeah. realize the value of privacy, mm -hmm. we would have bought. Because we yeah. understood that, okay, well, you know, every you know, down here when I was saying, hey, Monero, you can buy drugs with Monero, and then people were well, you can't anymore. Yeah. Why should it it should go right back to where it was, right? Yeah. Well, it, it went back up it actually because, went back people up. because people the realized that the privacy, it's, it's not just about buying drugs. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if some people start buying drugs with it, then, yeah, it's now a lot more valuable. But, you know, once they couldn't buy drugs with it because yeah. of the exit scam, they said, hey, you know what? It, it's still it's still valuable. Yeah. Because of and and I just want to say this, yeah. guys, is that there are people like, for example, we live in the United States. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, the same pharmaceutical drugs mm -hmm. that are being sold here in the U.S., they're cheaper in another country. The same drugs that may be sold for $30 a pill here. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I first had, uh, you know, I had to take some heart medication. And, and, and for example, like Lipitor, mm -hmm. which is the number one selling uh, pharmaceutical drug in the world at the time before uh, they, be, they had a generic, they were selling it for close to $30 a pill. Mm -hmm. So in order to take 30, a 30 day supply of it, that cost $300 mm -hmm. in US dollars, right? So at the same time, there were countries out there that were selling it much cheaper, like in Mexico sure. and Canada and other countries. The problem is you can't buy it with the U.S. dollars. But if you go into the dark net markets and you find a reputable source that supplies it, you can actually buy it with Bitcoin, Monero, with Monero, yeah. with Dash, or with some sure. of the other coins, sure. and then save you some money. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as it was from a reputable source. Sure. All right. So, all right. So all right, let's, let's go, go back, back to this. Uh, where were we? Um, all right. So yeah, the Oasis Horizon right here. Crash. Yep. yep. Right. So talk about the fairness uh, yeah, with Monero, yeah. so, right? So the reason Monero was started, like what, the question the audience might have is, well, why, why didn't everyone just use Bitcoin, right? Yeah. That was the first one. Um, there was a lot of, uh, in the crypto community, they were not happy. Uh, there was some controversy. Uh, and this is all documented on the forums as to um, the issues where it was said that 
most of the coins were mined by a small group of people, mm -hmm. and many people were not happy with the initial distribution. They didn't feel it was fair. Yeah. Uh, because they had to, uh, hey, you, perhaps maybe the, there they were accusations saying the miners mined a bunch of coins before releasing it to the public, so it didn't okay. give the community a chance to mine those coins. So right? they weren't fair. So they, it wasn't fair, right? And, and I don't want to judge whether or not it was fair. You guys can, I, I, I provided a link here that you guys can go read it and follow the thread, and you can judge whether or not it's fair. Um, but regardless of whether or not it was fair, uh, Monero has is blown by Bitcoin uh, and is now the leading crypto note base. Yeah, nobody even country. knows what Bitcoin is yeah, anymore yeah, yeah. until we did yeah, this yeah, research yeah, and found right. out about it. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so there goes just a reminder, yeah. you know, that it's a uh, fork of yeah. Bitcoin. Fifty cents down here, guys, and yeah. you know. Next, we want to talk about Zcash, and here's a Zcash uh, price chart from 2016. If you look real closely, it shows that it's at five bitcoins and it dropped all the way down to a third uh, of a Bitcoin here. But if you go back to the history previous to that and look at the rest of it, right, it looks like this. At one point, it was uh, traded at 3,200 uh, Bitcoins per uh, Zcash token. And what you saw earlier at five Bitcoins is way down here and you can't even see it, right? So explain this phenomenon. Uh, uh, well, why, right. why is this crazy chart like this? So Zcash uh, uh, was very unusual because it started trading uh, from day one when it's released. And most coins are not like that. Most coins, they launch, and there's the exchanges don't pick themselves, don't pick up the coin until there's a big community mm -hmm. and enough people want to trade it. And, and then it, it, it's very rare that a coin uh, trades on a major exchange the on minute the, the it, minute it's released, yeah. right? Um, and so th that, that's, uh, that, that's kind of like why this activity, we see this activity. Uh, so Zcash uh, uh, was actually started uh, when, it, when the network launched. They did something called a slow start, which means <coughs> they didn't want uh, the early miners, the miners mm -hmm. that, uh, to, uh, that could get a jump on the network right away. So you to, mean that they already have hundreds of computers yeah, already they ready? they already have hundreds of computers ready to go on block zero, right? Yeah. Uh, getting all the coins, right? Okay. Um, so what they did, uh, their strategy was to do what they call a slow start, mm -hmm. right? Where uh, a very, very, very small amount of Zcash was mined per block for the first, say, month, right? So, so a, a very, very tiny amount was minted. Yes, in the first Every, month or so. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I forgot exactly how many blocks, but, um, and the idea was that this would give all the miners time to set up their hardware, to. Uh, you know, make sure all all their setup was correct and mm -hmm. and the software was correct, and they could start mining. Yeah. Uh, without having uh, all of the coins go to one miner that was ready. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So it makes it a fair distribution. A more fair distribution. That was the goal. They didn't want a large uh, 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 entity controlling a large amount of the outstanding Zcash. Right. Yeah. And then a month later, after the slow start period over, it would start at. You know, 50 Z cash or uh, you know, 50 Z caches every 10 minutes, right? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's the reason that th the price was that high is because there was almost no supply. So only a fraction, a tiny, yeah, a very uh, small fraction of, was traded like, at that amount. Yeah, there's a, not that many bitcoins that were traded at that amount. But you know, even if a fraction of a bitcoin is traded at that price, then you get these huge spikes. Yeah. Right? So the exchange is going to mark that yeah, on the price it's chart. Going to mark that on the price chart, but very very few. Uh, things were maybe somebody was buying it just for fun or something yeah, like that. Cause yeah, because we were sitting there watching it as it happened live yeah. when it got released, and there's you know there's no way somebody's gonna pay two or three thousand dollars for one uh, uh, Zcash. Not thousand dollars, bitcoins. Yeah, right. Two or three thousand bitcoins <laughs> valued at a thousand dollars each. Thousand dollars for one Zcash. No, yeah. that, that, so that's, that's, that's no one actually did that. <laughs> yeah. So um, so let's jump to some uh, Zcash facts here. Yeah. So yeah, so the project started out as a research, as a as a project in uh, uh, some universities, mainly John Hopkins, MIT, and a few others. Uh, so it was an academic project to begin with. It was a, a science project um, uh, uh, that was started at a university. The network, as we said, was launched in October 2016. Uh, the uh, it is a based on Bitcoin, and so therefore they're issuing the same amount of coins. Uh, as B Bitcoin is going to have the same issuance rate as Bitcoin. Uh, currently, as of this, uh, there's 800,000 coins at the moment uh, that's in circulation. 
And as I said, the, the schedule is going to, the number of coins is going to match Bitcoin. Okay. Um, it's tr currently trading at 38 bucks, uh, which with uh, about 800,000, uh, it's, a, you know, um, $35 million, give or take. Um, that's uh, the current market value. Okay. So the funding, of, let's talk about the funding availability because yeah. so, it's important that if a cryptocurrency is going to succeed, it needs money yes. to develop the yes. software. So Zcash has very strong uh, funding, community, you know, lots of support from a lot of people yeah. in the university. It's one of the few that, that actually got released from the very beginning and no one ex uh, suspected that it was a scam coin or, sure. or a fraud. Sure. And no, no, this is one of the few that I've seen where it, was born without anyone suspecting that yeah. it was a scam. Well, because you ha we had big name universities behind it. We yeah. have credible professors, uh, very credible investors backing the project, right? Mm -hmm. So they, it, right so from the beginning. So talk about some of the investors in the VC yeah, groups so that's some, backing some it up. Some of the most well known that we, uh, um, is uh, Fred Ersham. Uh, he is a founder or co-founder of Coinbase. Uh, Eric Voorhees, uh, he was the founder of Shapeshift, which is a very popular uh, instant ex exchange. Ex instant exchange. Uh, Barry Silbert is a very big uh, investor in the space. Uh, he runs Digital Currency Group. Uh, Roger Ver, he was from Bitcoin almost from the, the beginning. He's also known as Bitcoin Jesus because when Bitcoin was at a dollar, he was standing on the street corner giving it out to people. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the funding, uh, in, a, in addition to these investors, 20% of the mining reports are going back to the, the Zcash uh, community, the, develop, the developers. So not only do they have all these big name developers who's invested, we don't know the exact amount, but it's mm -hmm. in the millions of dollars. 20% of all the Z new Zcash is being minted are going to this uh, the, the development community. So they're extremely well funded. Okay. Um, yeah, so even if the market cap isn't that high, they got a lot of money. Yeah, so um, talk about the team makeup. Yeah, so it, like we said, it began as, at the University of uh, John Hopkins University and MIT. Uh, Zuko is the founder. And uh, just in case people don't know, MIT is uh, the most prestigious uh, technology uh, university in America. Mm -hmm. It's located in the city of Boston, uh, which is in the state of Massachusetts, and that's what it stands for, Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. And it's about maybe a couple, two, three hours from the city of New York City. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's uh, very technology focused. Uh, they're not really doing any marketing or trying to get users or get merchants to adopt them or, just, or trying to get people to buy drugs with it or anything like that. It's uh, just very focused on the science, the technology, mm -hmm. to improve uh, the way uh, privacy is done. Uh, and th the near-term goals is the technology because it was using very cutting-edge cryptography uh, known as ZK Snarks, which we covered in a previous video. Okay. Um, so 2014 is when it began. So it was in development for two years before they launched the network. Uh, it was to implement zero knowledge proofs as a way to obfuscate the details of every transaction. And in case uh, you're new to cryptocurrencies, uh, obfuscate simply means to make unclear, make unintelligent, or unrecognizable. Yes. All right. uh, so th this idea of zero knowledge proofs, it's the idea that I could prove to you something is true without actually telling you what it is that yeah. I'm trying to prove, but you know for the fact that it's true. Uh, so and, and the main thing that they're trying to prove is that you know that it was not double spent. Yes. Right. Yes. Simultaneous at the same time. Yes. But the transaction, the financial transaction, is private. No one can see where it's coming from, where, where it's, it's going, going or how much. how much the quantity is. Uh, but at the same time, simultaneously to that, it can prove that it was not double spent, meaning yeah. that you didn't copy and paste the same coin and send it to ten different people. Yeah. And I haven't seen a good. Um, explanation of zero knowledge proofs to like a, a common person. How, how is people may ask, well, how is that possible? How can you prove that without actually telling me anything, right? Yeah. Um, like I said, this is very cutting edge. I, very advanced math. Very advanced math is okay. how it is. Uh, there's, I, I don't think there's a really good real world example of how you can do that. Okay. Um, so like we said, academics, cryptographers, researchers, software engineers, it's a, the, the biggest group of nerds that yeah. in any of these projects right now, now. I want to point out from an investor's perspective, guys, just because um, you have, it's well-funded from individual investors and VC groups, uh, venture capitalist groups, and the network itself also gives uh, the development team money, and they got the smartest people on the planet working on this. 
that doesn't always necessarily translate to a good investment. No, it does so, not. so the, you know, it we we, we still got to look at the the. I uh, mean, all of this is important. Yeah. But it's not a guarantee. It does, it, this does not mean Zcash is a sure thing. Yeah. By, exactly. By no means. <laughs> yeah. And we'll talk more about that uh, in the upcoming videos. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you said that it uses cutting edge uh, cryptography that's not yet well known and is only understood by a, a very, very small handful yeah, of very, people. Very, uh, uh, um, very technical people yeah. uh, only under can actually even explain how this black box works. Yeah, because uh, in the last video, uh, we talked about like the, 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 there's three technologies, the ring signatures, the mixing, and then the, uh, uh, yeah. the zero knowledge proof, the, the ZK snarks. Mm -hmm. And you said that there's a lot of people out there in the world that can understand the ring signatures and the mixing technology, yeah. but only a small handful yeah. of people. If, if you're reasonably technical, you have a little bit of technical yeah. background. You understand how computers work, or you're a even you're a you're like me. You're a software engineer, and you mm -hmm. actually write code. It, it's easy to understand ring signatures and mixing. It, it, it's mentally easy to understand. I haven't seen a, a good explanation of how zero knowledge proofs uh, can do that. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't understand it. Uh, but this will change. Yeah. Uh, as time goes by, as the knowledge will, will spread yeah. and uh, people, more people uh, can verify. More people can verify it. And not only more people can verify it, more people can explain it. Okay. Uh, but at this time, it's, uh, it's very hard to, to yeah. relate. To it so right now, now you say that the downside to this uh, with the Zcash is that it requires trusting yeah. the team, the people. Yeah. yeah. So the the because of this technology, mm -hmm. uh, they had to create uh, what is what seems to me like a bunch of private keys, basically a private key, but then it was split up into multiple mm -hmm. pieces where each team member had a piece mm -hmm. of the key, yeah. right? So no one individual could uh, steal the entire key. Yeah. Right? It was generated and then distributed among a, a group of people. Yeah. Uh, and the, those, those, key, those pieces were called shards. Okay. Uh, that's what they called them. And they said that these shards were, quote unquote, toxic waste. Because it can hurt the network. Because it can destroy the network if, if the pieces came together. Yeah. And then people could then break the, the, this black box and yeah. hack it, right? Basically double spend or, yeah. or generate, not even double spend, to generate counterfeit Z and coins. nobody would even know about and it. And no one would even know it because it's a black box. No one can even see it, right? Yeah. So they, so it does require trust. And they have this thing uh, called a ceremony mm -hmm. where they went through, they, they spent a lot of money. They're right. very well funded. I think it was okay. half a million or more uh, dollars to, to go through this and to document like what actually happened. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that requires trust because how do you know, like looking at these videos, how do you know they actually did that? Yeah. Right. Or yeah. was this just a big show? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they, they uh, that that's in this blog that they go into details about that. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, critics uh, yeah. because still one because of the you're not trusting in math. You're trusting in people, people to do it right. Yeah. And, and a big part of uh, cryptocurrencies is you don't have to trust anyone. Yeah. Right. You can just trust the code. And in this case, uh, I would say a major downside is you can't do this even by their own admission. You have to trust that they actually destroyed these uh, shards, this toxic waste, as they yeah. call it. Um, and they, they put on, there's lots of documentation. The, there's people vouching for it and very respected people in the community that said that they actually did that. Okay. Um, but like I said, that's still, that's still trust. Yeah. Um, and you said the critics don't like the fact that 20% of the mining rewards, 20% uh, yeah, of the new coins that are minted goes to go this, towards the development the, the team. Development team, which means it's a central, people will argue that's a centralized coin. It's controlled by uh, this entity. Right? But you and I, from an investor's perspective, we look at it as that's a good thing because they need money to develop the software. They need money, but there's uh, other ways. Uh, this is a governance issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we can talk about that. There's many ways to get money without having, you know, without hard to skim coding. skim off the top? Yes, to skim off the top yeah. and to, to like, basically they're hard coding in the software to yeah. give, basically it's like, if I, I'm writing this piece of software and I'm hard coding in the software to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, that's 20%. 20% of all the new coins. That Here we have a chart of Shadow Cash in 2016. If you'll notice, Shadow Cash um, started out down here uh, at the very bottom here, around uh, 25,000 Satoshis. And in nine months, it grew over 2,000% uh, in profit. So that's 22 times your money. So let's go look at some of the uh, Shadow Cash uh, facts here. Yeah. So uh, Shadow Cash began as a community project in 2014. There was no investors. There was no 
uh, ICO. There were no um, uh, venture capitalists or anything like that. It was a group of uh, guys uh, who came together and decided to uh, start this project. Uh, at the moment, there's 6.4 million coins in circulation. Uh, block rewards are about a quarter every minute. Every minute. Um, there's about 324 uh, SDCs is the, the symbol uh, for Shadow Cash. Uh, and it's about a 2% inflation rate. It's currently trading plus or minus $2. And uh, it's still uh, much smaller than Zcash, Monero, or Dash. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, at 14 million, it's, uh, it's notable. It's uh, definitely in the top 30 or so. Um, what, uh, I wanna, what I want to mention, add to that, is that Shadow Cash is not a, uh, a minor privacy coin, but it's not also a major privacy coin. Yes. It's kind of like lingering, like right in the middle. If there was such thing, uh, if there was anything between a major and a minor, yeah. it would be like kind of like in between. in between. And that's the yes. reason why we're mentioning here. Yes. Right. Uh, it's uh, uh, right now a community-based project. They, I, they, we don't know of any funding source of it for the moment. Right. Um, and also, want to bring up too that uh, earlier you mentioned about the difference between a feature mm -hmm. platform and a and, and a, uh, a platform, a feature, yeah. privacy, a privacy coin that focuses on a feature only, uh -huh. or a privacy coin that focuses on a platform. Yes. And you'll notice that when you go to their website. They say that it's the the shadow project. Project. Yeah, right? not just the, a coin. not just a privacy coin, coin but yeah. a shadow project. Sure, sure. And okay. I think we have that in so the next slide. So the team members uh, uh, are mostly anonymous at this point. Uh -huh. um, when we did the research into it, uh, when we started the research into the privacy coin uh, bucket, you know, we couldn't find anybody. Uh huh. They're uh, all handles. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're all uh, uh, nicknames, nicknames and handles and online. Uh -huh. uh, sure. Recently, we found one video. Uh, the guy's uh, he claims his name is Rhino. And he's supposed to be the lead developer for the project, and that was the only. I think he's uh, on social media, like on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, YouTube right? there's like a video about uh, of him, and he, he claims he's from South Africa, uh -huh. and that's like the only member member that has revealed themselves at sure, this moment, sure. right? Um, so talk about some of the shadow cash. Yeah, facts. so it's notable here because it is a Bitcoin. Uh, uh, it was built on top of the Bitcoin code base. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, unusual? What's uh, unusual about it is it, it uses ring signatures, uh, very, very similar to the way Monero um, does its privacy, uh, but it's built on top of the Bitcoin code base rather than a new code base uh, that Monero did, which came from Bitcoin and CryptoNote. Um, so you are going to, uh, you are talking about the platform. It does have a uh, uh, their roadmap includes uh, something called the marketplace. Uh, besides just the currency, they also want to build a what seems like an eBay at this time, yeah. uh, but with but privacy focused yeah. that, that protects your privacy. Um, messaging also, also uh, encrypted messaging for you to uh, communicate yeah. between one another. So in it a seems like way. The, their roadmap um, indicates that they're they're focusing on. A, an entire project where whether you want privacy or not, it's already built into, sure, the, to, sure. uh, into the system. Sure. So sure. you don't even... From the ground up, yeah. that it's going to be focused on privacy. Uh, so it, it, it seems like they're going for mass adoption, for, but for the folks that are concerned about their privacy. In business. In business, right? right. Uh, so the, the plan to adopt uh, for how to get people to use it, with it's sim it sounds to me like it's sim similar to Dash in that way, that mm -hmm. they're trying to get everyone to be able to use this. So yeah. uh, rather than being, say, a Zcash or Monero, that's really focused on one feature yeah. at this time, right? Um, it's easy. It's easily supported uh, and, and fairly widely traded now because it's derived from Bitcoin. So it's yeah. easy, it can take advantage of all the infrastructure. That it's more compatible with the exchanges, the wallets, the, wallet the services, pools, the mining pools. The mining pools, yeah. And it's, it's definitely, like we said, it's a lot smaller than Dash or Monero Zcash uh, at the moment. Um, it's definitely something that the community, is, you know, they don't have the funding yeah. or the community of any of those three at yeah. the moment. Yeah. And uh, um, talk about how some of the technologies, like sometimes uh, people tend, investors tend to think that, hey, mm -hmm. if it's a, uh, a big project already, mm -hmm. that that's the one to go after. But, the, but we not. we want the ones that have the potential to grow. Sure, sure, you know? absolutely not. So, um, uh, like you, you know, Monero sat around the, the, where Shadow Cash is right now for over a year. Yeah. Right, and uh, it was at 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, back to 10 million. You know, 
back back market and forth cap. market cap yeah uh and then finally it just exploded and, and same thing with dash dash yeah. just sat between 10 to 50 million for two years yeah yeah two years to uh before it started to run this year um so yeah it, it, it's it's no guarantee that just because they're big at the moment that they stay big yeah okay so um now <clears throat> That's one of the last uh, quote unquote uh, major privacy coins that uh, we're going to cover in some detail. Now we're going to cover some of the minor uh, or the miscellaneous uh, privacy coins. And before I cover that, I want to just define what we consider as an investor to be a miscellaneous or a privacy coin, right? The reasons why we don't go in depth about the miscellaneous privacy coins or the minor privacy coins is that there's such a small market cap right it has small trading volume that means that if we want it so that if somebody wants to invest at least one bitcoin mm -hmm. uh into the the privacy coin they can do it without moving the price of that currency mm -hmm. all right so a lot of these miscellaneous privacy coins that we're going to run through just really quick yeah. you really cannot no. even get like if, a, if a quarter one, of one if you bought one bitcoin you'd move the price up 10 or 20 percent just from your own buying yeah, yeah. And, and you you don't want to do that yeah. okay yeah. the low liquidity um, that means that there's not a lot of volume. So if you were, if you want to invest five or ten or twenty bitcoins into it, it's not really uh, possible. So we don't want to go in depth about it and mislead anyone and think, make them think that this is worth investing in because there's not a lot, enough volume, uh, and because it's low liquidity, right? Uh, and it's due to because there's limited exchanges that trade it and carry it, and the low liquidity also causes wide spreads. And the spread means that if the, the, the difference between what somebody offers it for and what someone is willing to pay for it could be a lot wider than what you want, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we're just going to fly through this very, very briefly, okay? The first miscellaneous privacy coin that we want to mention is Bitcoin uh, because it was the original cryptocurrency that implemented the crypto note protocol, and it, uh, it was held back by perception of an unfair distribution. Uh, the people, the community felt that 80% of it was in the hands of a very small group of people, right? Uh, it was surpassed by Monero, which forked it and implemented a more transparent distribution and more fair. So that's why Monero had more adoption. So miscellaneous privacy coin number two is Zcoin. It's another privacy coin project using the zero knowledge proof to maintain privacy like Zcash, right? So it's a fork or a clone or a copy of it, right? It uses very similar technologies, but made different trade-offs. Yeah. A compared lot of to Zcash trade-offs such as right? hiding, not hiding transaction amounts yeah so that you could account for all the coins to make sure nothing was being like counterfeit coins weren't being produced yeah because yeah. one of the concerns that the community has in Zcash is because it's in a black box and not too many people know about it that there's a potential that a hacker can create counterfeit coins and then introduce it into the network and no one would ever know about it whereas Zcoin is trying to make it so that's transparent in the quantity not where it's the sender or the receiver is, but the quantity of coins that's in the network so that everyone can check it, right? So uh, miscellaneous privacy coin number three is Komodo. It's also another fork of Zcash. And it's looking to develop a decentralized trading platform and uses a delayed proof of work, mm -hmm. right? And you wanna talk about that? Yeah, quick? yeah, so it delay it's just a technical feature where it can allow uh, it can allow to use, I, I believe the idea is so that it can use Bitcoin's security mm -hmm. because Bitcoin has the most amount of hashing and miners with mm -hmm. it and then leverage that to secure its own network. Okay. That, that's what they're trying to do here. Okay. Um, it's, the reason it's notable here is, or that we mention it here is because they recently raised quite a, quite a good amount of funding. You know, yeah, that's 2,600 uh, Bitcoins. Bitcoin. So that's uh, $2.6 million in funding, which is, uh, you know, it's so adequate to get the project yeah, going. Yeah, it's ad adequate to get the project going, yeah. Okay, so miscellaneous privacy coin number four is NavCoin. Uh -huh. uh, NAV, I found out, you know, while we were making this, mm -hmm. right, stands for Navajo uh, coin, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Navajo is a Native American tribe in America, Indian tribe. They were the indigenous people that were here before the Europeans came. Yeah. And they're attempting to do mixing with master nodes, similar to Dash, but with different technology. Yeah. Okay. And they don't call it master nodes; they call yeah. it something else. Uh, but it, the, the idea is that you, you, these nodes um, do do the the privacy, do the mixing. Okay. Um, and and the way they do it is is interesting. Okay. Um, so miscellaneous privacy coin number five is Bullberry, right? Bullberry sounds more like a fashion name <laughs> than it does a uh, a privacy coin name. Okay. But it's another crypto note coin. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, right, based on the crypto note uh, 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 yeah. uh, technology, uses their own proof of work algorithm, and they have pruning to optimize the blockchain size. Uh, yeah. You want to just take them? Uh, yeah, yeah. So a lot of these projects, the problem is the the bloat, right? Yeah. Like uh, Bitcoin's blockchain is over a hundred gigabytes. If you know, no one's running a full yeah. node now because it's just going to eat up your entire computer space. Yeah. Unless you're a miner, or you have some reason to. So that that you know, they, they, like I said, these miscellaneous, they they're focusing on like features. They're taking an existing pro project and trying to improve it. Yeah. And trying to do very about you know things that they think are are valuable okay mm -hmm. so all right so let's quickly summarize what we covered in this uh uh video here um there are two types of cryptocurrencies ones that come from bitcoin and ones that come from crypto note there are four major privacy projects out on the market right now that is worth looking at that's dash that's monero and there's zcash and shadow cash and we mentioned that Shadow Catch is not a big player or a major player like the other three, but it appears that they're on the verge of it, right? Uh, each project has a unique story behind it. There are dozens of privacy coin projects uh, currently on the market. The focus on uh, the privacy, major privacy coins or the soon to be major privacy coins, such as uh, the Shadow Cash project here, right? Uh, there's minor privacy coins are too small or insignificant right now at the moment. There's just not enough trading volume. Uh, one of the main criteria that we look at before we consider investing into a cryptocurrency or a, a privacy coin is that we, you should be able to buy at least one Bitcoin of it without moving uh, the price of it. Mm -hmm. And that way, everyone around the world uh, can benefit from it. If we talk about a cryptocurrency where you can only buy one or two tokens or a fraction of a Bitcoin, then it's really, it doesn't, apply to all our audience okay so we want to make sure that we talk about things that sure. our audience can look at and invest in without sure. and, uh, and we, safely and also we don't want to manipulate the market either yeah. because if we talk about it and there's so little liquidity and yeah. a bunch of you guys go and buy it yeah it makes us look bad it, it makes us look bad because you know? we have no intention of pumping everything yeah. but if we talk about it more then people are going to inter even if we say don't buy it people are some people are going to do that and that's going to affect the market yeah, yeah. okay so I uh, want to give you guys a quick teaser of what's upcoming in the next video. In the next video, well, in the first video, we made the case, you know, and then the argument for why privacy is important. In the second video, right, we made the, in the, uh, the we explained the technology behind it, right? And now we made an investment case, right, mm -hmm. for why you might want to consider investing into privacy coins and look at the privacy coin bucket. And now in the upcoming video, we're going to do a fundamental analysis of the major privacy coins and what's behind it. And then uh, that's what you'll do. And then I'll do a technical analysis of the major privacy coins and what we can uh, project out what the potential profit targets and projections for the major privacy coins are and what we can expect the price to reach to or do our best of doing it. You know? mm -hmm. So thanks for watching these series of videos, guys. And we'll look forward to, uh, you know, Seeing you guys again in the next video. If you have friends, families, or colleagues or coworkers that are interested in creating life-changing profits in cryptocurrency investing, make sure that you guys share this video with them. And if you have friends or family or anyone that are interested in looking at the privacy coin bucket of cryptocurrencies, make sure you share this video with them as well. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you guys in the next video. 25,000 Satoshis, and in nine months, it grew over 2,000% uh, in profit. So that's 22 times your money. So let's go look at some of the uh, Shadow Cash uh, facts here. Yeah. So uh, Shadow Cash began as a community project in 2014. There was no investors, there was no uh, ICO, there were no um, uh, venture capitalists or anything like that. It was a group of uh, guys uh, who came together and decided to uh, start this project. Uh, at the moment, there's 6.4 million coins in circulation. Uh, block rewards are about a quarter every minute. Every minute, um, there's about 324 uh, SDCs is the, the symbol uh, for Shadow Cash, uh, and it's at about a 2% inflation rate. It's currently trading plus or minus two dollars, and uh, it's still uh, much smaller than Zcash, Monero, or Dash. But at, you know, at 14 million, it's uh, it's notable. It's uh, definitely in the top 30 or so. Um, what um, I want to mention, add to that, is that Shadow Cash is not a, uh, a minor privacy coin, 
but it's not also a major privacy coin. Yes. It's kind of like lingering like right in the middle. If there was such thing, uh, if there was anything between a major and a minor, yeah. it would be like kind of like in between. in between. And that's the yes. reason why we're mentioning here. Yes. Right. Uh, it's uh, uh, right now a community-based project. They, I, they, we don't know of any funding source of it for the moment. Right. Um, and also, I want to bring up too that uh, earlier you mentioned about the difference between a feature platform and a and and a uh, a platform, a feature yeah. privacy a privacy coin that focuses on a feature only, uh -huh. or a privacy coin that focuses on a platform. Yes. And you'll notice that when you go to their website. They say that it's the, the shadow project. Project. Yeah. Not just, the, the coin. Not just a privacy coin, coin but yeah. a shadow project. Sure, sure. And okay. I think we have that in so the next slide. The team members uh, uh, are mostly anonymous at this point. Uh -huh. um, when we did the research into it, uh, when we started the research into the privacy coin uh, bucket, you know, we couldn't find anybody. Uh -huh. uh, they're uh, all handles. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. all uh, uh, nicknames, nicknames and handles online. Uh -huh. uh, sure. Recently, we found one video. Uh, the guy, uh, he claims his name is Rhino. And he's supposed to be the lead developer for the project, and that was the only. I think he's uh, on social media, like on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, YouTube right? there's like a video about uh, of him, and he, he claims he's from South Africa, uh -huh. and that's like the only member member that has revealed themselves at this sure, moment, sure. right? So um, talk about some of the shadow cash Yeah, facts. so it's notable here because it is a Bitcoin, uh, uh, it was built on top of the Bitcoin code base. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, unusual, what's uh, unusual about it is it, it uses ring signatures, uh, very, very similar to the way Monero um, does its privacy, uh, but it's built on top of the Bitcoin code base rather than a new code base coin almost from the, the beginning. He's also known as Bitcoin Jesus because when Bitcoin was at a dollar, he was standing on the street corner giving it out to people. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the funding, uh, in, in addition to these investors, 20% of the mining reports are going back to the, the Zcash uh, community, the, develop, the developers. So not only do they have all these big name developers who's invested, we don't know the exact amount, but it's mm -hmm. in the millions of dollars. 20% of all the Z, new Zcash is being minted are going to this uh, the, the development community. So they're extremely well funded. Okay. Um, yeah, so even if the market cap isn't that high, they got a lot of money. Yeah, so um, talk about the team makeup. Yeah, so it, like we said, it began as, at the University of uh, John Hopkins University and MIT. Uh, Zuko is the founder. And uh, just in case people don't know, MIT is uh, the most prestigious uh, technology uh, university in America. Mm -hmm. It's located in the city of Boston, uh, which is in the state of Massachusetts, and that's what it stands for, Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology. And it's about maybe a couple, two, three hours from the city of New York City. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's uh, very technology focused. Uh, they're not really doing any marketing or trying to get users or get merchants to adopt them or just, or trying to get people to buy drugs with it or anything like that. It's uh, just very focused on the science, the technology mm -hmm. to improve uh, the way uh, privacy is done. Uh, and the near term goals is the technology because it was using very cutting edge cryptography uh, known as ZK Snarks, which we covered in a previous video. Okay. Um, so 2014 is when it began. So it was in development for two years before they launched the network. Uh, it was to implement zero knowledge proofs as a way to obfuscate the details of every transaction. And in case uh, you're new to cryptocurrencies, uh, obfuscate simply means to make unclear, make unintelligent, or unrecognizable. Yes. All right. uh, so th this idea of zero knowledge proofs, it's the idea that I could prove to you something is true without actually telling you what it is that yeah. I'm trying to prove, but you know for the fact that it's true. Yeah. Uh, so and, it's, and the main thing that they're trying to prove is that, you know, that it was not double spent. Yes. Right? Simultaneous yes. at the same time. Yes. But the transaction, the financial transaction is private. No one can see where it's coming from, where, where it's, it's going, going or how, much. how much the quantity is. Uh, but at the same time, simultaneously to that, it can prove that it was not double spent, meaning yeah. that you didn't copy and paste the same coin and send it to 10 different people. Yeah. And I haven't seen a good um, explanation of zero knowledge proofs to like a, a common person. How, how is people may ask, well, how is that possible? How can you prove that without actually telling me anything, right? Yeah. Um, like I said, this is very cutting edge. I, very advanced math. Very advanced math is okay. how it is. Uh, there's, I, I don't think there's a really good real world example of how you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, new Zcash is being minted are going to this uh, the, the development community. So they're extremely well funded. Okay. Um, yeah, so even if the market cap isn't that high, 
they got a lot of money. Yeah. So um, talk about the team makeup. Yeah. So it, like we said, it began as, at the University of uh, John Hopkins University and MIT. Uh, Zuko is the founder. And uh, just in case people don't know, MIT is uh, the most prestigious uh, technology uh, university in America. Mm -hmm. It's located in the city of Boston, uh, which is in the state of Massachusetts, and that's what it stands for, Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. And it's about maybe a couple, two, three hours from the city of New York City. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's uh, very technology focused. Uh, they're not really doing any marketing or trying to get users or get merchants to adopt them or, just, or trying to get people to buy drugs with it or anything like that. It's uh, just very focused on the science, the technology, mm -hmm. to improve uh, the way uh, privacy is done. Uh, and th the near-term goals is the technology, because it was using very cutting-edge cryptography uh, known as ZK-SNARKs, which we covered in a previous video. Okay. Um, so 2014 is when it began. So it was in development for two years before they launched the network. Uh, it was to implement zero knowledge proofs as a way to obfuscate the details of every transaction. And in case uh, you're new to cryptocurrencies, uh, obfuscate simply means to make unclear, make unintelligent, or unrecognizable. Yes. All right? uh, so th this idea of zero knowledge proofs, it's the idea that I could prove to you something is true without actually telling you what it is that yeah. I'm trying to prove, but you know for the fact that it's true. Uh, so and, and the main thing that they're trying to prove is that you know that it was not double spent. Yes. Right. Yes. Simultaneous at the same time. Yes. But the transaction, the financial transaction, is private. No one can see where it's coming from, where, where it's, it's going, going or how much. how much the quantity is. Uh, but at the same time, simultaneously to that, it can prove that it was not double spent, meaning yeah. that you didn't copy and paste the same coin and send it to ten different people. Yeah. And I haven't seen a good. Um, explanation of zero knowledge proofs to like a, a common person. How, how is people may ask, well, how is that possible? How can you prove that without actually telling me anything, right? Yeah. Um, like I said, this is very cutting edge. I, very advanced math. Very advanced math is okay. how it is. Uh, there's, I, I don't think there's a really good real world example of how you can do that. Okay. Um, so like we said, academics, cryptographers, researchers, software engineers, it's a, the, the biggest group of nerds that yeah. in any of these projects right now, now. I want to point out from an investor's perspective, guys, just because um, you have, it's well-funded from individual investors and VC groups, uh, venture capitalist groups, and the network itself also gives uh, the development team money, and they got yeah. until we did this research yeah. Yeah. and found right. out about it. That's right. Okay. That's right, yeah. So, um, so there goes, just a reminder, yeah. you know, that it's a uh, fork of yeah. Bitcoin. 50 cents down here, guys, and, yeah. you know. Next, we want to talk about Zcash, and here's a Zcash uh, price chart from 2016. If you look real closely, it shows that it's at five Bitcoins, and it dropped all the way down to a third uh, of a Bitcoin here. But if you go back to the history previous to that and look at the rest of it, right, it looks like this. At one point, it was uh, traded at 3,200 uh, Bitcoins per uh, Zcash token. And what you saw earlier at five Bitcoins is way down here and you can't even see it, right? So explain this phenomenon. Uh, uh, well, why, right. why is this crazy chart like this? So, so Zcash uh, uh, was very unusual because it started trading uh, from day one when it's released. And most coins are not like that. Most coins, they launch, and there's the exchanges don't pick themselves, don't pick up the coin until there's a big community mm -hmm. and enough people want to trade it. And, and then it, it, it's very rare that a coin uh, trades on a major exchange the on minute the, the it minute it's released, yeah. right? Um, and so th that, that's, uh, that, that's kind of like why this activity, we see this activity. Uh, so Zcash uh, uh, was actually started uh, when, it, when the network launched. They did something called a slow start, which means <clears throat> they didn't want uh, the early miners, the miners mm -hmm. that, uh, to, uh, that could get a jump on the network right away. So you to, mean that they already have hundreds of computers yeah, already they ready? they already have hundreds of computers ready to go on block zero, right? Yeah. Uh, getting all the coins, right? Okay. Um, so what they did, uh, their strategy was to do what they call a slow start, mm -hmm. right? Where uh, a very, very, very small amount of Zcash was mined per block for the first, say, month, right? So, so a, a very, very tiny amount was minted. Yes, in the every, first month or so. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I forgot exactly how many blocks, but, um, and the idea was that this would give 
all the miners time to set up their hardware, to uh, you know, make sure all, all their setup was correct and, mm -hmm. and the software was correct and they could start mining yeah. uh, without having uh, all of the coins go to one miner that was ready, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. So it makes it a fair distribution. A more fair distribution. That was the goal. They didn't want a large uh, 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 entity controlling a large amount of the outstanding Zcash, right? Yeah. And then a month later, after this slow start period over, it would start at you know, 50 Zcash or you know 50 Zcashes every 10 minutes, right? Okay. Um, okay. So that that's the reason that the price was that high is because there was almost no supply. So only a fraction, a tiny, yeah, a very uh, small fraction of, was traded like, at that amount. Yeah, there's a, not that many bitcoins that were traded at that amount. But you know, even if a fraction of a bitcoin, then it does a. Uh, <laughs> A privacy coin name, okay? But it's another crypto note coin, yeah. uh, uh, right? Based on the crypto note uh, 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 yeah. uh, technology, mm -hmm. uses their own proof of work algorithm, and they have pruning to optimize the blockchain size. Uh, yeah. You want to just take them? Uh, yeah, yeah. So a lot of these projects, the problem is the the bloat, right? Yeah. Like uh, Bitcoin's blockchain is over a hundred gigabytes. If you know, no one's running a full yeah. node now because it's just going to eat up your entire computer space. Yeah. Unless you're a miner, or you have some reason to. So that that you know, they, they, like I said, these miscellaneous they they're focusing on like features. They're taking an existing pro project and trying to improve it, yeah. and trying to do very val you know things that they think are are valuable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So let's quickly summarize what we covered in this uh, uh, video here. Um, there are two types of cryptocurrencies: ones that come from Bitcoin and ones that come from crypto note. There are four major privacy projects out on the market right now that is worth looking at. That's Dash, that's Monero, and there's Zcash and Shadow Cash. And we mentioned that Shadow Cash is not a big player or a major player like the other three, but it appears that they're on the verge of it, right? Uh, each project has a unique story behind it. There are dozens of privacy coin projects uh, currently on the market. The focus on uh, the privacy, major privacy coins or the soon to be major privacy coins such as uh, the Shadow Cash project here, right? Uh, there's minor privacy coins are too small or insignificant right now at the moment. There's just not enough trading volume. Uh, one of the main criteria that we look at before we consider investing into a cryptocurrency or a, a privacy coin is that we, you should be able to buy at least one Bitcoin of it without moving uh, the price of it. Mm -hmm. And that way, everyone around the world uh, can benefit from it. If we talk about a cryptocurrency where you can only buy one or two tokens or a fraction of a Bitcoin, then it's really, it doesn't apply to all our audience. Okay, so we want to make sure that we talk about things that sure. our audience can look at and invest in without and, and uh, we, safely. And also, we don't want to manipulate the market either yeah. because if we talk about it and there's so little liquidity and yeah. a bunch of you guys go and buy it, yeah. it's, it makes us look bad. It, it makes us look bad because you know? we have no intention of pumping everything. Yeah. But if we talk about it more than people are going to interpret. Even if we say don't buy it, people are, some people are going to do that and that's going to affect the market. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I uh, want to give you guys a quick teaser mm -hmm. of what's upcoming in the next video. In the next video, well, in the first video, we made the case, you know, and then the argument for why privacy is important. In the second video, right, we made the, in the, uh, the we explained the technology behind it, right? And now we made an investment case right, mm -hmm. for why you might want to consider investing into privacy coins and look at the privacy coin bucket. And now in the upcoming video, we're going to do a fundamental analysis of the major... Uh, I agree with uh, his point. Uh, as a software engineer, that's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I completely agree if that's necessary uh, okay. for, from an investment uh, Sandy, remember we're yeah we're, we're, investors. we're investors. We're investors. Here, we're, right? not uh, we're not engineers. We're not engineers because I, I would argue like something like Doggy Coin or Dogecoin yeah. built themselves up to a twenty million dollar market cap from nothing just based on just the, copying Bitcoin. Just copying <laughs> and Bitcoin. Nothing, and else. No, nothing else. I yeah. mean, you would have made okay. a bunch of money if you invested if you were one of the okay. early investors in Bitcoin. And also, yeah. I meant to say Charles Hoskinson is the one of the former co-founders of Ethereum, not the founder. Yeah, he's, he's a former the, former yeah. co-founder. Yes. All right. Yes. So. And then talk about CryptoNote and, and its philosophy here. Yeah, so CryptoNote saw the privacy problems Bitcoin had that we had covered in the, the last video. So it, it's, it was a research project uh, set out to try to fix those problems, to try to make uh, the, the currency fungible, which we defined in the last video. And that means uh, making sure... Well, Making sure that the money in my pocket is the same, is the same as the money, money in your and pocket. And they're doing that by removing the transaction history behind each 
Bitcoin. Okay. Um, now talk about the open source. Uh, 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 so, so it's, okay. so it, it's an it's open source means how it works is a white paper that you can download for free off their website. Uh, and so they also created a reference implementation that you can go, if you know, if you're a software engineer, you can go and read it to see if it actually does what they say it does. So when, when we um, say that it's open source and it can be inspected by others for flaws, why is that important? Well, it, it's, it basically is it's a security guarantee that anyone who understands technology can go validate that what you're saying okay. is true. And it, it's also important because especially for uh, security and privacy, yeah. Uh, projects is to, to as many eyes looking yeah, at it as possible. Yeah, and it's also to make sure that you are actually doing what you say you're doing. Okay, so can you give the audience an example of what's a closed source uh, software? A closed source software is anything you buy, in, any software you'd buy from like Microsoft, Windows, Windows okay. uh, anything from Apple. It's, it's generally closed source, it's proprietary. Which means, you know, how it works, they don't tell you. you so you only know. the company engineers. Only the company engineers can look at, can it. Look at it. But open okay. source means it's on GitHub. It's which is a website that uh, for software developers okay. that they can go and download. Um, like you can go download if you go on the Bitcoin uh, w website, you can go download the entire source code and look okay, at it. Okay, so crypto node uh, has financial privacy. It's unlinkable, untraceable transactions. So that means that you cannot go back and see where the transactions came from or where it's going, mm -hmm. right? Now, fair proof of work, right? Uh, it can be mine on an average PC. That means that CryptoNote, uh, the, the technology can be done on any regular PC. You don't have to have a whole mining company like or a mining pool. Like a A6, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and it's adaptive to market, uh, to changing market conditions, which is important as markets change. So uh, when we talk about mass adoption, right, um, they're talking about, you know, getting many consumer focused features yeah. such as ATMs, instant payments, user interface designs, and debit cards. Yeah. But you said that their main thing that, that he stressed the most was getting grandma yeah. can use uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, that's, so. that's the thing in there. Okay. So uh -huh. let's talk and jump into uh -huh. Monero, yeah. right? Sure. Uh, let's talk about Monero in 2016. Um, it had over 3,000% gains yeah. mm -hmm. right in the first nine in nine months. Mm -hmm. That's 30 times your money. Um, biggest winner. Yeah, yeah. That, that is definitely life-changing. When you guys hear us talk about life-changing money, uh, you put a thousand bucks in this and it turns into $30,000 in nine months. Mm -hmm. That's life-changing. Or 10,000 to 300,000, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that can buy you, get, be a down payment yeah. for your house. That can you know buy you a house. Uh, that can pay for your college, that can do a lot of things, pay for your wedding, that's definitely life changing. Mm -hmm. And in the light arrow, in the light text here, uh, it went up 37 times if you just wait another four months. <laughs> sure. Right? Definitely life changing profits are available in the privacy coin sector, guys. Yeah. Right? So let's talk about some of the Monero facts. Yeah, sure. Right. So uh, the project was started uh, a couple years after, one or two years after the Bitcoin. Uh, coin came out in April of 2014. Uh, there's expected to be 18 million coins. Uh, right now there's 14 million circulating. Uh, there's eight coins uh, with two minute blocks and reducing, eventually that's gonna go down over time to just 0.3 uh, Moneros uh, every two minutes. And what that means is that there's eight coins, uh, eight Monero coins new, are, new are coins. minted. Yeah, minted every right. two minutes. Every two minutes. Yeah, it's 15 bucks. We're over 200 million uh, market cap. And it is the leading, as of now, the leading privacy coin bucket as measured by market cap. That's solely focused on privacy. Now, Dash does, at this time of this video, Dash is bigger, but they're no longer full focused solely on privacy. Yeah. Um, so th it's a community-funded project, uh, as, as, as from my understanding, that it was a bunch of guys that got together and decided to, because there were some issues with the way uh, Bitcoin was distributed and they wanted to start a new project, a new currency okay. that they believed was more fair. All right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. talk about the team makeup. Yeah. So uh, there's this character uh, called Fluffy Pony. Uh, that's, his, that's his handle. He goes by that um, on, online, that, on his Twitter and on social media. Uh, his real name is Ricardo Spagni. I hope I'm yeah. saying that right. Um, many of the, once again, because this is a, these are privacy projects, many of the developers seem to want to wish to remain anonymous. So there are many contributors. We don't know the identities of all of them. Um, but you can, for those that want to reveal themselves, you can go to that website to find out who they are. Uh, right now, they're, they're technology focused. Uh, they're really focused on trying to, they've been having, they want to integrate it because it's yeah. so popular, but yeah. they're having a really hard time. And to this day, after two years, Monero's been out, I think two years now, yeah. uh, 
there are still no uh, third-party wallets. Okay. Even to this day. <laughs> hmm. Yes. And, then, and you said that when they put out a, uh, a web wallet, it even got hacked or something like that? Well, or people have reported wallet? it because, because it's, they, they did put out a web wallet. And um, because it's a web wallet, it has all the vulnerabilities of any web wallet. Yeah. Um, and uh, th there have been reports on the... On the um, on the uh, forums about people losing their Moneros. Okay. Um, so it's it's a lot more work for exchanges to support, uh, and like like we mentioned here, it can, there's a huge code base of Bitcoin that would be easily adaptable for the coins that are based on Bitcoin's uh, uh, code base. Okay. Uh -huh. So let's talk about. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk real quick about the team members of the Crypto No. Uh -huh. uh, they have Johannes uh, Meyer. He's the chief cryptographer. Maurice Plank, the cryptographer. You don't have to memorize all these people or what their roles are, right? But what's important here is that crypto note, uh, we put a question mark here because there's not a lot of information on there. Like we try to research and find them mm -hmm. and it's not easily uh, uh, um, found. Mm -hmm. So the, because it's a privacy coin project, these people want to, these call, people want to remain private. private. Right? <laughs> yes. And I'm not even sure if those are their real names, okay? Uh -huh. So, I mean, it was hard to find them, yeah. right? Now. A few things that you guys want to know about CryptoNote is that they have a foundation. It was announced on July 14, 2014. Their mission and their philosophy is to unite and facilitate the community, to standardize and develop CryptoNote technology, and to promote the CryptoNote as the next generation crypto platform. And they say that there's more information coming soon about the foundation. I put a question mark here because it's not very clear. Um, I try to look for more information, but none of the links work to any of the names of the people that's on the board or any of it. And then uh, I put a red arrow there because uh, in the light uh, colored text right there, it says that um, they'll be, will be announced in late 2015. And it's already 2017, two years later, and we still haven't heard much from the foundation, okay? So uh, just be aware of that. Um, now there's components of CryptoNode uh, as well. There's other components. There's the CryptoNode technology that we just discussed. And there's a crypto note forum that you can go in there. There's not a lot of activity there. And then what's interesting is that they have the crypto note starter, right, which allows you to create your own cryptocurrency in 10 minutes. Now, this is basically how the, the, the new cryptocurrencies are created. Many uh, of them, yes. Yeah, many of them, right? Let's take a look at some. Uh, the first crypto note privacy coin was actually called Bitcoin. And crypto note was originally just a white paper, you mm -hmm. said? Yes, sir, yeah. And then the first crypto note based currency was released in July, July 2012, 2012, and it's called Bitcoin, and it's created in close cooperation with the crypto note. Okay. Um, but like I said, that's still, that's still trust. Yeah. Um, and you said the critics don't like the fact that 20% of the mining rewards, 20% uh, yeah, of the new um, coins that are minted goes to go this, towards the development the team. Development team, which means it's a central, people will argue that's a centralized coin, it's controlled by. Uh, this entity. Right? But you and I, from an investor's perspective, we look at it as that's a good thing because they need money to they develop the software. They need money, but there's uh, other ways. Uh, this is a governance issue, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we can talk about that. There's many ways to get money without having, you know, without hard to coding. skim off the top? Yes, yeah, to skim off the top yeah. and to, to, like, basically they're hard coding in the software to yeah. give, basically it's like, if I, I'm writing this piece of software, and I'm hard coding in the software to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, that's 20%. 20% of all the new coins. That Here we have a chart of Shadow Cash in 2016. If you'll notice, Shadow Cash um, started out down here uh, at the very bottom here, around uh, 25,000 Satoshis. And in nine months, it grew over 2,000% uh, in profit. So that's 22 times your money. So let's go look at some of the uh, Shadow Cash uh, facts here. So uh, Shadow Cash began as a community project in 2014. There was no investors, there was no uh, ICO, there were no um, uh, venture capitalists or anything like that. It was a group of uh, guys uh, who came together and decided to uh, start this project. Uh, at the moment, there's 6.4 million coins in circulation. Uh, block rewards are about a quarter every minute. Every minute. Um, there's about 324 uh, SDCs is the, the symbol uh, for Shadow Cash, uh, and it's at about a 2% inflation rate. It's currently trading plus or minus $2, and uh, it's still uh, much smaller than Zcash, Monero, or Dash, but at, you know, at $14 million, it's, uh, it's notable. It's uh, definitely in the top 30 or so. Um, what uh, I want to mention, add to that, is that Shadow Cash is not a, uh, a minor privacy coin. 
but it's not also a major privacy coin. Yes. It's kind of like lingering like right in the middle. If there was such thing, uh, if there was anything between a major and a minor, yeah. it would be like kind of like in between. In between and that's yes. the reason why we're mentioning here. Yes. Right? Uh, it's uh, uh, right now a community-based project. They, they, we don't know of any funding source of it for the moment. Right. Um, and also want to bring up too that uh, earlier you mentioned about the difference between a feature platform and a and, and a, uh, a platform, a feature, yeah. privacy, uh, privacy coin that focuses on a feature only, uh -huh. or a privacy coin that focuses on a platform. Yes. And you'll notice that when you go to their website, they say that it's the, the shadow project. Project. Yeah. Not just, they, a, coin. Not just a privacy coin, coin but yeah. a shadow project. Sure, sure. And okay. I think we have that in so the next slide. The team members uh, uh, are mostly anonymous. Came out a few years ago, it's called CryptoNote. Uh, and so what they do is CryptoNote actually uh, is a research project and a white paper. And, and they, let's go to it. Yes, let's go to it. Okay. Well, well, we'll get to that in we'll a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start yes. with the Bitcoin first. All right, sure. So Bitcoin, there's uh, a bunch of these privacy projects that started out with the Coinbase, uh, I mean, the Bitcoin uh, software. software code base. Uh, and they're Zcoin, Dash, Shadowcash, Zcash, and then... There's also multiple forks of Zcash, and one of them is like uh, Zclash is an example of them. Um, so why, what, what's the advantage if you start with the Bitcoin code base is because uh, you're very similar to Bitcoins, it's easy for everyone to adopt your, your, uh, your coin because it's very similar to Bitcoin, which there's a huge code base already there. That means exchanges can list you very easily, mining pools, Wallet makers can integrate you, and it's easy to support because Bitcoin is so widely understood. And uh, in case you're new to uh, cryptocurrencies, mining pools are the computers and the, the people who volunteer their computers to process all the transactions in the network and secure the network. Yeah. So uh, what, what are some of the disadvantages? The disadvantages, like it, it's, it's hard to know if the developers have a deep understanding of the cryptography, of the math, of the code even, if they haven't built it, if they just simply took someone else's code and are just hacking it to, to you know, you know, add these privacy features, it, it's not very clear if they actually know what they're doing. Um, so, th and and that's really and that creates technical risks, right? They don't, there's no guarantee because they don't have a deep understanding of the math and the the cryptography behind it, and that uh, creates risk to the project as an investment because somebody might just come along and hack the whole thing. Uh, and and so that that's a big disadvantage. Okay, so just uh, um, just uh, uh, so this would be analogous to uh, analogous to if someone takes the Bitcoin software and they put a security feature on top of it, that would be like uh, when you go to the automotive dealerships and like the trucking companies, they would go and buy the chassis yeah. from like Ford Motor Company or. Or from RAM. A better analogy, I think, would be like if you bought a sports car yeah. and you ripped the engine out and dropped the new engine in, right? Okay. And now okay. to, to, let's say, increase the horsepower, but you don't know if they actually, uh, you know, got the suspension and all the other things correct to match, to match what this new engine does, okay. right? Now, you want to talk uh, about, because uh, 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 there are people in the cryptocurrency world that believe that you should start from scratch, like uh, Charles Hoskinson. Yeah, the, he was the, arguing that former founder of Ethereum. Yeah, he he's, uh, was arguing that un unless you've rebuilt the whole thing, mm -hmm. basically, uh, if we're using cars as an analogy, it would be right. the equivalent of let's strip the whole car down to its component parts and put it all back together again. Yeah. And if you can do trading plus or minus two dollars, and uh, it's Still uh, much smaller than Zcash, Monero, or Dash, but mm -hmm. at, you know, at 14 million, it's uh, it's notable. It's uh, definitely in the top 30 or so. Um, what um, I want to mention, add to that, is that Shadow Cash is not a uh, a minor privacy coin, but it's not also a major privacy coin. Yes. It's kind of like lingering, like right in the middle. If there was such thing, uh, if there was anything between a major and a minor, yeah. it would be like kind of like in between. In between and that's yes. the reason why we're mentioning here. Yes. Right. Uh, it's uh, uh, right now a community-based project. They, I, they, we don't know of any funding source of it for the moment. Right. Um, and also want to bring up too that uh, earlier you mentioned about the difference between a feature platform and a and, and a, uh, a platform, a feature, yeah. privacy, uh, privacy coin that focuses on a feature only, uh -huh. or a privacy coin that focuses on a platform. Yes. And you'll notice that when you go to their website. 
they say that it's the the shadow project. Project. Yeah. Right? Not just the, a coin. not just a privacy coin, coin but yeah. a shadow project. Sure, sure. And okay. I think we have that in so the next slide. The team members uh, uh, are mostly anonymous at this point. Um, when we did the research into it, uh, when we started the research into the privacy coin uh, bucket, you know, we couldn't find anybody. Uh -huh. they're, uh, they're all handles. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're yeah. all uh, uh, nicknames, nicknames and handles online. Uh -huh. uh, sure. Recently, we found one video. Uh, the guy, uh, he claims his name is Rhino, and he's supposed to be the lead developer for the project. And that was the only... I think he's uh, on social media, like on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Or, uh, there's like a video about uh, of him. And he claims he's from South Africa, uh -huh. and that's like the only member member that has revealed themselves at this sure, moment, sure. right? Um, so talk about some of the shadow cash. Yeah, packs. so it's notable here because it is a Bitcoin. Uh, uh, it was built on top of the Bitcoin code base. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, unusual? What's uh, unusual about it is it, it uses ring signatures, uh, very very similar to the way Monero um, does its privacy. Uh, but it's built on top of the Bitcoin code base rather than a new code base uh, that Monero did, which came from Bitcoin and CryptoNote. Um, so you are going to uh, you are talking about the platform. It does have a, a, a ro their roadmap includes uh, something called a marketplace. Uh, besides just the currency, they also want to build a what seems like an eBay at this time, yeah. uh, but with but privacy focused yeah. that, that protects your privacy. Um, messaging, also, also uh, encrypted messaging for you to uh, communicate yeah. between one another. So in it a seems like way. The, their roadmap um, indicates that they're they're focusing on a an entire project where whether you want privacy or not, it's already built into sure, the to, sure. uh, into it, the system. Sure. So sure. you don't even from the ground up yeah. that it's going to be focused on privacy. Uh, so it, it it seems like, between, and that's yes. the reason why we're mentioning here. Yes, right. Uh, it's uh, uh, right now a community-based project. They I, they we don't know of any funding source of it for the moment. Right. Um, and also want to bring up too that uh, earlier you mentioned about the difference between a feature mm -hmm. platform and a and and a uh, a platform a feature yeah. privacy a privacy coin that focuses on a feature only uh -huh. or a privacy coin that focuses on a platform. Yes. And you'll notice that when you go to their website, they say that it's the, the shadow project. Project. Yeah. Not just, the, the coin. Not just a privacy coin, coin but yeah. a shadow project. Sure, sure. And okay. I think we have that in so the next slide. The team members uh, uh, are mostly anonymous at this point. Uh -huh. um, when we did the research into it, uh, when we started the research into the privacy coin uh, bucket, you know, we couldn't find anybody. Uh -huh. uh, they're uh, all handles. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. all uh, uh, nicknames, nicknames and handles online. Uh -huh. uh, recently, we found one video. Uh, the guy, uh, he claims his name is Rhino, and he's supposed to be the lead developer for the project. And that was the only... I think he's uh, on social media, like on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Or, uh, there's like a video about uh, of him, and he, he claims he's from South Africa. Uh -huh. And that's like the only member member that has revealed themselves at this sure, moment, sure. right? So um, talk about some of the shadow cash Yeah, packs. so it's notable here because it is a Bitcoin, uh, uh, it was built on top of the Bitcoin code base. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, unusual, what's... Uh, unusual about it is it, it uses ring signatures, uh, very, very similar to the way Monero um, does its privacy, uh, but it's built on top of the Bitcoin code base rather than a new code base uh, that Monero did, which came from Bitcoin and CryptoNote. Um, so you are going to, uh, you are talking about the platform. It does have a uh, uh, their roadmap includes uh, something called a marketplace. Uh, besides just the currency, they also want to build a what seems like an eBay at this time, yeah. uh, but with but privacy focused yeah. that, that protects your privacy. Um, messaging also, also uh, encrypted messaging for you to uh, communicate yeah. between one another. So in it a seems like way. The, their roadmap um, indicates that they're they're focusing on. A, an entire project where whether you want privacy or not, it's already built into sure, the to, sure. uh, into it, it, the system. Sure. So sure. you don't even from the ground up yeah. that it's going to be focused on privacy. Uh, so it, it it seems like they're going for mass adoption for but for the folks that are concerned about their privacy in business is, in business, right? right. Uh, so the the plan to adopt uh, for how to get people to use it with it's sim it sounds to me like it's sim similar to Dash in that way that mm -hmm. they're trying to get everyone. To be able to use this, so yeah. uh, rather than being, say, a Zcash or Monero, that's really focused on one feature yeah. at this time, right? 
Um, it's easy. It's easily supported uh, and and fairly widely traded now because it's that exit scam. And it, and that this should have that should have been the end yeah. of Monero. I mean that really. In but it did. Like I said, privacy is beyond just uh, buying but, drugs. Yeah. Uh, we, we we covered that in the first video. That uh, the, the 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 news when everyone's this caused everyone to start looking at this. Yeah. And despite uh, the exit scam, uh, people uh, realize that hey, this is more valuable as privacy th as privacy than just using it to buy drugs. Yeah. Right. This uh, people thought that oh, it's valuable because you can use it to buy drugs. Well, you can't use it to buy drugs anymore. Yeah. And they crashed, right? And that should but have then, been dead. And that should have been dead. That should have been the end of it. But they realized that, hey, it's not just buying drugs. Yeah. It's the privacy feature it's in it privacy is what features. encouraged people to still use it. Uh -huh. And that's the reason why it went back up. Yeah, and it's even higher now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, yeah. just this is an important note to yeah. make, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the distinction to make. The 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 Dartnet businesses that that announced that they were accepting Monero uh, as a currency on their in, on, on their, in their business and mm -hmm. their market, right? The business was a scam, mm -hmm. but the technology behind Monero is not a scam. Yes. So just be aware of that, guys. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just just because you know someone uh, 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 rips off their customers uh, for their currency does not mean that that currency is bad or it's a scam. Okay? So we just want to make that very clear that Monero, the currency, the, the cryptocurrency, is not a scam. Their technology mm -hmm. is doing what they claim yeah. for it to do. Mm -hmm. It's just the business that decided to accept it. Ran off with everyone's and money. You know what? If we real, if if I or we yeah. realized the value of privacy, mm -hmm. we would have bought because we yeah. understood that. Okay, well, you know, every you know down here when I was saying, hey, Monero, you can buy drugs with Monero, and then people said, well, you can't anymore. Yeah. Why should it? It should go right back to where it was, right? Yeah. Well, it, it went back up. It actually went back up. People realized the people privacy. Realize that the privacy. It's it's not just about buying drugs. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if some people start buying drugs with it, then yeah, it's now a lot more valuable. But you know, once they couldn't buy drugs with it because yeah. of the exit scam, they said, hey, you know what? It, it's still it's still valuable. Yeah. Because of and, the and I just want to say this, yeah. guys, is that there are people like, for example, we live in the United States, mm -hmm. right? But uh, the same pharmaceutical drugs mm -hmm. that are being sold here in the U.S. They're cheaper in another country. The same drugs that may be sold for $30 a pill here. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I first had, uh, you know, I had to take some heart medication. And, and, and for example, like Lipitor, mm -hmm. which is the number one selling uh, pharmaceutical drug in the world at the time before uh, they, be, they had a generic, they were selling it for close to $30 a pill. Mm -hmm. So in order to take 30, a 30 day supply of it, that cost $300 mm -hmm. in US dollars, right? So at the same time, there were countries out there that were selling it much cheaper, like in Mexico sure. and Canada and other countries. The problem is you can't buy it with the U.S. dollars. But if you go into the dark net markets and you find a reputable source, then feature yeah. at this time, right? Um, it's easy. It's easily supported uh, and and fairly widely traded now because it's derived from Bitcoin. So it's yeah. easy. It can take advantage of all the infrastructure that is more compatible with the exchanges, the wallets, with the wallet the services, pools, the mining the, pools, the mining pools. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely, like we said, it's a lot smaller than Dash or Monero or Zcash uh, at the moment. Um, it's definitely something that the community, is, you know, they don't have the funding yeah. or the community of any of those three at yeah. the moment. Yeah. And uh, um, talk about how some of the technologies, like sometimes uh, people tend, investors tend to think that, hey, if it's a, uh, a big project already, mm -hmm. that that's the one to go after. But, the, but, we, not. but we want the ones that are, have the potential to grow. Sure, sure. You know? Absolutely not. So, um, uh, like, you, you know, Monero sat around the, the, where Shadow Cash is r right now for over a year. Yeah. Right. And uh, it was at 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, back to 10 million, you know, back, back and forth. Cap. Market cap. Yeah. Uh, and then finally it just exploded. And, and same thing with Dash. Dash yeah. just sat between... 10 to 50 million for two years. Yeah. Yeah, two years to uh, before it started to run this year. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's no guarantee that just because they're big at the moment that they stay big. Yeah. Okay. So um, now <clears throat> that's one of the last uh, quote unquote uh, major privacy coins that uh, we're going to cover in some detail. Now we're going to cover some of the minor uh, or the miscellaneous. Uh, privacy coins. And before I cover that, I want to just define what we consider 
as an investor to be a miscellaneous or a privacy coin, right? The reasons why we don't go in depth about the miscellaneous privacy coins or the minor privacy coins is that there's such a small market cap, right? It has small trading volume. That means that if we want it so that if somebody wants to invest at least one Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, into the, the privacy coin, they can do it without moving the price of that currency, mm -hmm. all right? So a lot of these miscellaneous privacy coins that we're gonna run through just really quick you really cannot no. even get like a, a quarter one, of a, If you bought one Bitcoin, you'd move the price up 10 or 20% just from your own buying. Yeah, yeah. And, and you you don't want to do that, yeah. okay? Yeah. The low liquidity, um, that means that there's not a lot of volume. So if you were, if you want to invest five or 10 or 20 Bitcoins into it, it's not really uh, possible. So we don't want to go in depth about it and mislead anyone and think make them think that this is worth investing in because there's not a lot, enough volume. Uh, and because it's low liquidity, Right, uh, and it's due to because there's limited exchanges that trade it and carry it, and the low liquidity also causes wide spreads. And the spread means that if the, the, the difference between what somebody offers it for and what someone is willing to pay for it could be a point. Uh, as a software engineer, that's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I don't know if I completely agree if that's necessary uh, okay. for from an investment. Uh, Sandy, remember we're yeah we're, we're, investors. we're investors, we're investors, here, right? we're not engineers. Uh, we're not engineers because I, I would argue like something like Doggy Coin or Dogecoin yeah. built themselves up to a twenty million dollar market cap from nothing just based on just copying Bitcoin, just copying and Bitcoin, nothing, and else. No, nothing else. I mean, yeah. you would have made okay. a bunch of money if you invested if you were one of the okay. early investors in Bitcoin. And also, yeah. I meant to say Charles Hoskinson is the one of the former co-founders of Ethereum, not the founder. Yeah, he's, he's a former the, former yeah. co-founder. Yes. All right. Yes. So. And then talk about CryptoNote and, and its philosophy here. Yeah, so CryptoNote saw the privacy problems Bitcoin had that we had covered in the, the last video. So it, it's, it was a research project uh, set out to try to fix those problems, to try to make uh, the, the currency fungible, which we defined in the last video. And that means uh, making sure... Well, Making sure that the money in my pocket is the same, is the same as the money, the money in your pocket. And it, they're doing that by removing the transaction history behind each coin. Okay. Um, now talk about the open source. Uh, uh, uh. So, 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 so it, it's an it's open source means how it works is a white paper that you can download for free off their website, uh, and so they also created a reference implementation that you can go if you know if you're a software engineer you can go and read it to see if it actually does what they say it does. So when, when we um, say that it's open source and it can be inspected by others for flaws, why is that important? Well, it, it's, it basically is it's a security guarantee that anyone who understands technology can go validate that what you're saying okay. is true. And it, it's also important because, especially for uh, security and privacy, yeah. Uh, projects is to, to as many eyes looking yeah, at it as possible. Yeah, and it's also to make sure that you are actually doing what you say you're doing. Okay, so can you give the audience an example of what's a closed source uh, software? A closed source software is anything you buy, any software you'd buy from like Microsoft, Windows, Windows okay. uh, anything from Apple. It's, it's generally closed source, it's proprietary. Which means, you know, how it works, they don't tell you. you so you only know. the company engineers. Only the company engineers can look at, can it. Look at it. But open okay. source means it's on GitHub. It's which is a website that uh, for software developers okay. that they can go and download. Um, like you can go download if you go on the Bitcoin uh, w website, you can go download the entire source code and look okay, at it. Okay, so crypto node uh, has financial privacy. It's unlinkable and untraceable transactions. So that means that you cannot go back and see where the transactions came from or where it's going, mm -hmm. right? Now, fair proof of work, right? Uh, it can be mined on an average PC. That means that CryptoNote, uh, the, the technology can be done on any regular PC. You don't have to have a whole mining company like or a mining a pool. Like yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So and it's adaptive to market, uh, to changing market conditions, which is important. As markets change, you can adjust the parameters of the software, yeah. right?